It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Alex, Andy, and Renee are all in the house. We're going to try to figure out what Apple might announce in the next couple of months, what they're going to announce in the June uh, time frame, and what they are going to announce in the fall. Our peerless prognosticators will give you their predictions in just a little bit. The story of the AirTag that uncovered a secret German intelligence division and what's gone wrong with iCloud Sync. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 802, recorded Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. The Pepper Grinder Mac. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to break into the world of IT? Get the introduction you need with IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash MacBreak for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions. For the lifetime of your active subscription, just use the offer code MacBreak30 at checkout. And by Imperfect Foods. Imperfect Foods is catching the food that's falling through the cracks of our food system by sourcing quirky yet delicious foods. Right now, Imperfect Foods is offering our listeners 20% off your first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com and use the promo code MACBREAK. And by Melissa. The U.S. Postal Service processes more than 98,000 address changes every day. Is your customer contact data up to date? Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's easy to log on Sign up and start playing in the API Sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned free at melissa.com slash twit. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Apple. The news is next with Andy and Akko from WGBH Boston and points, and points East. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Leo. He's How stockpiling are you doing? COVID tests. <laughs> <laughs> Just not, in no, case. But not, see, but, but, but not for sale profiteering. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only exchanging them for favors. That's a totally different thing. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if favors means what you think it means. Anyway, uh, Renee. No, no, it's, 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 it's exactly what you think it means. Okay. It means that when, I'm call, when, I, when I call an electrician to say, yes. you know, maybe he'll come over, maybe he won't say, well, gosh, maybe, maybe you would like the extra, an extra COVID uh, rapid there, test actually, to take home with you. It's like cigarettes in prison. I mean, this is the currency of the age. It's good to have. <laughs> Renee Ritchie also here, youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Hello, sir. Not as, I'm not doing as well as Don Andy of you know, bag of COVID tests. Don Andy. <laughs> Don Andy. Bag of COVID tests. Uh, oh, it's on my mind because I went in for a rapid test this morning because Michael, our son, has uh, has it. But uh, he's on the uh, I hope he's feeling better. better. He's feeling, well, not much better. He sounds like he has a cold. He's talking like this. But, it's like it caught everyone at the last minute, Leo. Like all my friends on Twitter at the last minute, they're like, oh, we're so almost close. made it. It's this close. Yeah. Alex Keep Lindsay's also quarantined at home, but everybody comes to him with OfficeHours.Global. Hello, Alex. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to be hey, here. You got the world in your studio, basically. They come to you. You know, it's just, it's really well set up and it's nice and it's the... <laughs> it's the future. You're it, very it really much is. in the future. You're like, uh, you're like JT in uh, Blade Runner. You just got like all your little... <laughs> Oh, your little friends. <laughs> you know, they, it's, it's, it, you know. When you come when in you're the not, studio, does, does office hours wake up and go, good morning, good morning, <laughs> good morning, Alex? It is pretty much like I, I go, I get up, I get up early, I kind of I read the news a little bit, and, and somewhere between 5 and 5.30 in the morning, I just turn on, people are already in and conversation, they're, they're all like, do, 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 and I just like, they're and sometimes I just listen for a while, and I'm, I'll just listen because I don't want to interrupt anybody, yeah. I just kind yeah, of yeah. sit in the back. And then when it gets quiet, I'm like, hi, everybody. And then we start talking and nice. then the whole thing's, the whole thing goes until nine. It's, it's nice. a lot of fun. That's really cool. Yeah. It's very relaxed. Yeah, that's good. Alex, do you, do you ever, do you ever wonder that maybe you've got a fight club thing going on here where there's actually <laughs> part of your personality that's running the show when you think that you're quote asleep? Mm. <laughs> it's quite, it's I have to say, I've gone in there and Alex is always there. Something called Alex. Only they're calling him I, Tyler for some reason. <laughs> yeah, Tyler I, Durden. There was funny. You know, I, I, I leave it. I leave it on like radio, so I, I just listen a lot of the time. So I'll be working, and I just listen to because office hours runs, of course, after hours runs twenty one hours a day. The time that office hours isn't running, and so I just listen to after hours. Like anytime I'm not in a meeting and I'm just working on things, like I, I just play it in the background, and then I can just jump in. 
and say some, you know, like it's, it's, it's like listening to really cool radio by really smart people where you can actually contribute if it makes sense. And then you can go back to what you're doing. Sometimes it's only a couple words, you know, so. Uh, I poor Micah Sargent, our producer and uh, host of iOS today has been putting in extra hours trying to find anything, anything to talk about. Our top story uh, this <laughs> week, how to clean the polishing cloth. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Roy can't. No, no, <laughs> you got two. That's the, that's the only, I got, that's, that's the, the only thing, thing I can say for Roy Kent on this it, show. That's how big they are. It's how big they are. They're tiny for 19 schmucks. Yep. But but they're so nice. <laughs> these were only ten. These were only nine fifty. Oh, those or no, are the these official are, Apple ones. No, these are them. These are the official ones. Do they have the little Apple embossed on it? Uh, yeah, right there, right there. That's how right big there. they are. Yeah, these are them. So what happened was is that I ordered like I don't know what happened, but I ordered these. I was like, I have to know what this is like. You know, like I have to have a <laughs> understanding of this. I can't be left out of the club here. So so I I ordered one, and Apple the next day said. Uh, there's something wrong with your shipment. We're going to send you another one. Like, just oh, like, nice. we'll send you another one. Then they both showed up. <laughs> oh, so, nice. they're, so they're, you know, so anyway, so I've got an extra one. There, they are. I them. will say. Are you sure they're not $19? They Cause that's what there's the list price is. Maybe you got a deal. They are. They, I bought one and it, they, oh, I get it. Through some you kind gotta, of shipping error. Apple a, just immediately. You got a BOGO Like it was deal. like, <laughs> yeah. there was like, yeah, it was like uh, Apple, the app store. The, I got to tell you the Apple store, they've really figured this out. I mean, I order, I order a Mac mini. And it showed up at my house in an hour and a half. It wow. would take me longer to drive they're, to Corte Madero and they're back. They're couriering, couriering them. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway, so, so this just was... so you know, hand wash the polishing cloth with dish soap and water, rinse thoroughly, then allow it to air dry for 24 hours. It says so right here. So there you go. Make sure you do that. Since doing it's a little been... I'm doing a little ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> is this, is this you know, a little bit How do you know? Those like are twice quite... the performance of Android cloths. <laughs> The funniest thing is, yes, but, I yes, but I'm, 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 op I'm open to wipe my mouth with but, it if I want to. But, but if you listen, if you listen, see, so here's the microfiber. <laughs> Sounds like a rodent. <laughs> it must be different, though. These were hand skinned by Johnny Ive in a forest, okay, in an arboreal <laughs> wonderland. Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> honestly <laughs> perturbed that they're that small. Do the ones that yeah. come but with that's the, how you handle them, Leo. Do the ones that yeah. come with the XDR display, are they that small as well? Didn't they, didn't the MacBooks used to come with? Big like eight eight by eight yeah. claws or you know those are unreal. Know, these are all you need. Smaller is, this is all, all you, you need. need. Just put your. You, you, <laughs> I mean, you only use like a corner of it at a time. You're like, I guess. It's do you use them for oven mitts, Andy? Sorry, Alex. Do you use them for oven mitts. No, too? I've not used them as oven mitts because then I would have to wash them by hand again. They they only, they don't leave oh, the office. Okay. It's kind of like yeah, baseball exactly. gum. Baseball cards used to come with a big stick of gum, and over the years it got smaller and smaller and smaller. They called it, it the cards. They called it gum. I don't know they if it was chemical. It was a yeah, exactly. And what we call, yeah. we got, you got, the, you got, you got, but you still got the retro NFTs, otherwise known as the cards. Yeah, you did get the retro. Yeah. The, the, in the good retro old days NFTs. of NFTs. All right. Well, that's our top story. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, everybody. <laughs> Alex Lindsay, buy one get one. Apple polishing cloth. There is, of course, from Mark Gurman, and you know. You you always say this, Renee. So I'll 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 save you the trouble. This is Mark's speculation, not based on f information. Is that that the non the non Bloomberg the, the stuff that Bloomberg wouldn't put in the in he an can article, put it in his but, newsletter? <laughs> yeah, he deserves a platform. Bloomberg oh, is super you know. stringent. Mark on nine to five was so much fun. Mark on Bloomberg is very blue. It's yeah. very like yeah. big journal. Yeah. So it's good. I like that he has some fun on the newsletter. Yeah. yeah. Well, ever ever since Bloomberg announced announced that uh, a, a a a a hostile nation had already embedded invisible tracking chips yes. in every piece of communication equipment that nobody in America was able to find, even though they were looking for it. I, I, I hope I, I believe that I believe they they pursued a once burned twice what twice Maybe burned. Maybe that's the uh, new yeah the new thing, Bloomberg, yeah. the new chastened Bloomberg. So. Uh, some of this, I think, is rumor. Some of it is speculation. Uh, Apple's big event... Actually, first of all, he says, and this is he thinks, this is going to be the biggest year for new products you know, in ages for Apple, uh, 2022. A lot of this won't be out in the spring, but there is, I think, widespread belief for good reason that Apple will have a spring event. There was no spring event in 2020 because of the pandemic, but they did release... Yeah, it got canceled. They did release MacBook Airs and iPads in the March of that year, second-generation iPhone SE in April, and a 13-inch MacBook Pro update in May. Magic Keyboard. Yeah. Last spring, they yeah. did have an event, 
April 20th, uh, Earth Day, remember? It was AirTags, mm -hmm. M1, uh, the first uh, M1 uh, products, including iPad Pro. Uh, no, the no, iMac. this wasn't the first ones. It was the, the second generation. Yeah. The iMac, the colorful iMacs. Uh, so, Purple iPhones, AirTags. <laughs> Ars Technic has put together a list of p past years, April 20th, March 25th, March 27th, March 21st. I'm thinking we should see something in March. Right, Renee? I mean, the sooner the better for me. I just want to, I want to get I this know. year started already. And, I, <laughs> and I, I say that as like 2021, like 2020 was so slow. 2021 and 2022 feel like the weeping angels from Doctor Who. Where every time I blink, a month gets closer. And if I blink again, the month gets even closer. So I'm, I'm hesitant about it going past too, going well, going on too fast. But I just, I like that something will get going again. And these are not the most... Um, a day, like these aren't the most challenging of products. VR headsets and things like that are way more dubious or, or, or way more challenging. An iPhone SE with 5G, I mean, they can ship that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and there is, uh, there, there are, uh, besides speculation on Gurman's part, there seems to be some reliable reports about an iPhone 5G SE. The Russian, the Russian registry the Russian, has leaked uh, Russian. iPhones and iPads. And the European Economic Commission... Uh, their uh, their radio and telephone telegraph. I don't know. Are they still telegraphs? Their radio and telegraph commission says a bunch of new iPad models. We think are on the way. Um, Apple also, I think, in in this spring one, sometimes it often thinks about education. You know, in that area, because this is when people are making their final purchasing decisions for the fall, and so we could see you know iPads that are kind of leaning towards that. Um, I think we could possibly see some movement in the USDZ. Uh, process um, that, you know, Apple's slowly rolling the USDZ out to everything. Um, this would be the best time if they want schools to think about it, to, to release it for, you know, something like Keynote and Pages and stuff like that. So, um, uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they do anything in the USDZ slash photogrammetry route. Um, but they usually want to get educators excited as well as part for, for this um, specific event. Ours yeah. points out the iPad Air hasn't been updated since late 2020. Yeah, and not unusual for the Air alas. Yeah, it comes. Does, is the pro typically the 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 leader in the, this? The pro was every eighteen months until last year when it was twelve months. But it feels like it's going to go back to eighteen months, like towards the end of the year when M two is ready. But the iPad Air and the iPad Mini have been, uh, you know, two years here, yeah, two and a half years there. The iPad Mini, I think, was the most egregious recently. The the baby iPad, the iPad, the well, I forget what they call it now, the ninth generation, eighth generation. Those have been every twelve months. Every September, they've had one for the last four years. It's just the the middle range. Is it is tied to, to the on, chip? On is it tied to the chip? Uh, like when they have a new chip, they, do they have an A fifteen? They have A fifteen in the pros, and the mini has an A fifteen. Yeah, and it's in the mini, and it's going to go into the air uh, this March. So April. that's so that's kind of the laggard. So if you were to if you were to see where the the chips were. And then who's got them and then who doesn't, then that would be the next one, which is. Well, I think air. like the mini was really popular for a while. Um, and then like it led iPhone, iPad sales for a while enough that it actually destabilized the larger iPads. But then when the phones got bigger, people started choosing bigger phones over smaller iPads and going back to the larger size iPads. And we got the pros and the movement went back in that direction. And I think the mini was just on the back burner, like Apple. Apple has a small teams approach where they have limited bandwidth for a certain amount of products every year. And the mini just fell lower and lower on that list. Like what the Mac mini does, unfortunately, so often. It's not the most, it's one of the least popular of those products. Jeez, you'd think the Mac mini would be more popular, honestly. It's, yeah. I think that the, the M1 MacBook has Air. changed the Mac, the M1 has changed the Mac mini completely. Like it, it is a, it's a not different a machine. It, it is. potentially just, could be, I mean, with a high-end M1, with an M1 Max, could be the real. See, I, I mean, it's a, it's a I, very I, powerful desktop with yeah. an M1 Max. Right. Yeah. It's just the desktops aren't that popular. Apple's that's the problem. Laptop. Yeah. That's the problem. Consumer, yeah, mainstream consumer laptops, especially the Air. When the Mini Mac Mini was first announced, it was the idea was if you're a developer and you're in Windows, you could you know kind of inexpensively because it was about 500 bucks test yeah. and develop for the mac you just put Rip in fact i think they even like showed it sitting on a pc tower <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it would be very easy for you to just have that uh that's those days nobody's doing that or is well, we're supposed to get the pro version of that this spring too like we're supposed to get well, that's the what I want. Uh, mac mini with the m1 max that's the what m1 the one pro, i'm waiting right. for which would yeah. be a hell of a machine yeah i mean i'm i'm doing i'm it used to be we used to, i mean i've 
at any given time had a lot of Mac minis because we use them for glue. Like, oh, I need a little thing to do this or I need a little thing to do that. I'm now using them for playback systems, Resolve, Cinema 4D, Final Cut, Motion. Like all of those things are working on the Mac mini because I have the M1. And that's does even it, with does that lower 8 gigs M- or 16 gigs. Does that lay, lower end M1 have the ProRes playback chip? No, no, no. 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 So the, the, the hardest part for me yeah. has been waiting for that because... Yeah. I don't need a laptop anymore. I don't travel enough to make that worth it. And so so I have I have lots of laptops, going, but I don't need a new one. You're going one. in the other direction. Yeah. Do you I mean, think that's and, true and a lot of many people are. pros? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of us. There's just more and more people, I mean, that are going to work virtually. They right. are working, for, you know, they're working on those things. So for, why have a laptop? Or, you know, maybe yeah. have an M, uh, uh, Air, MacBook Air, and uh, have a, something more powerful it, at the desktop. It's just that for the price. It's so inexpensive and so powerful that if we get if we get a Mac a Mac Mini with a Max, that's at nine ninety nine. It would be, you know, it, you just get so much power and so much connectivity on the back end. You have Ethernet cables, uh, you have <laughs> HDMI and USB Cs and USB As, and you know all of those things are all there for you. And then it's nice, compact. You, you know, it doesn't take up your desk space, you know, as well. So well, let me it's ask, a, it's, uh, it's just an amazing little all box. All three of you are peerless prognosticators. Mac <laughs> mini this spring, iMac 30 inch this spring, or this fall? Renee, spring or fall? What do you, I'm putting, I'm, he's, the envelope, he's doing the Karnak. <laughs> Sis, boom, uh, I, think, I think we'll get the iPhone SE, we'll get the iPad Air, we'll get the Mac mini, and then I would love to get, the, I think it's 27 inch iMac is what they've fallen on. But it's, and they're, the latest rumor is that it's going to have uh, a 12 core version of the M1 Max chipset available at the ultra high end instead of a two die version. It'll just have extra extra performance cores, which will you know help some pro workloads. But it sounds like that is less certain, like whether that'll be ready in time is less certain. So I'm going to leave that as my bonus round. My is the chip thing. shortage somewhat of a uh, issue still? Does it make it somewhat It's not so much a shortage. Is that there's only like um, the shortage is always on the legacy nodes. It's like that's why cars have such a trouble. It's like on the big nanometer processes. Apple pays so much money and buys so much in advance that it's just and they're the only they ship more premium devices than the next I don't know three or four big companies combined. So they have unlimited unlimited use of that node, but just that node itself is limited and Apple has to prioritize. Like right. the iPhones are getting chips first. Right. And then what he, like and then like things fall down and stack behind the iPhone. Well good news because Intel's that building a big plant in Ohio in a couple of years they'll be making Apple chips. And TSMC though. They're going all in on TSMC <laughs> yeah, yeah, until yeah. they do that. So they're gonna make TSMC even bigger yeah. to compete with them in a couple of years. Yeah. We'll talk about that. I read Bed Thompson's okay. article. It was very interesting. Andy Anako, peerless prognosticator. Uh, Spring. I, I, I would I'd be shocked if there weren't a new Mac Mini in the next couple of months. Oh, good. Because one of the things that we're looking at is that remember that Apple said that the transition to M1, uh, the, the, the transition to Apple Silicon would be complete in two years. Uh, so that means that by the end of this year, they they should at least announce new Mac Pros. Uh, we haven't heard anything about uh, what a new Mac Pro with Apple Silicon is going to look like. So you would think that you'd see we would have heard something by now if they were going to be uh, doing something in March or April, and it would make sense for them to say all the people who are uh, kind of hot and bothered to get a get in a to get a Mac Mini, let's get their money first, and then let's yeah. but let's not if we don't if dilute we count the, the Mac, Mac Pro, early, Pro release with a Mini. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Words. And yeah. so it's, it, it would be, I mean, it would be awesome if the idea of a, if, if it were, if it were difficult to choose between a high end Mac mini with Apple Silicon and a low end Mac pro with Apple Silicon, but that's the reason why I'm going to wait until the end of the year before I make yeah. a desktop purchase. Yeah. But yeah, Mac mini, I think for sure. Cause that little cheese grater looks so cute. Uh, <laughs> that'd be so cute. Well, you want the PCIe that. slots, right? I mean, that's going to be the big, <laughs> oh, hopefully that'll on. be the big really? difference. You know, I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think they're going to go for, for a hybrid design between like the, the cylindrical tower and the cheese grater is going to be the pepper grinder uh, <laughs> Mac Pro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. And, and I can't Pro, innovate my butt. And Mac Pro, I think we, Renee mentioned this last week, but it seems like they might preview that in June for a release yeah. at the end of the year. Yeah. That we might see some details anyway. But they did I, the last two times. They've got to because we're, you know. <laughs> Developers need this, Leo. They need this. Yeah. We've, we've been a long three years. We need this. Alex Lindsay, your peerless prognostication i think that the se and the and the ipad have a lot of possibilities i think that those are pretty core um do they put the mac mini out in the spring or in june i think is the question or you know they may roll out a lot of hardware in june and not as much in the spring um so that that might be one thing to kind of track and then the other things that we're going to be tracking and what do they talk about with education education is 
explosive right now um, just because there's so much movement. So there's a lot of a lot of people paying attention to education at the moment um, from from a business perspective. And then the other thing is whether Unity shows up on on the you know on stage. So um, you know Unity has finished its purchase of Weta. They just bought some more stuff this week, um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if Apple includes them as and that will be kind of the 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 solution the final movement from epic you know yeah. into something new is <laughs> unity actually being yeah. on stage um and that's going to be you know a lot of i think a lot of folks in my world are paying attention to whether apple really starts to embrace unity or whether they just stay neutral and we'll we'll find out um in a month well they're not apple. exactly neutral <laughs> because <laughs> well they're not but what they what we haven't seen we, we, we we've but seen them not not get along unity. with uh, yeah 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 it's we typical. haven't seen a lot of unity on on stage yeah. and that's that's the thing is that but unity now bought weta digital um, you know, they, they really been, ought you know, to buying up their unity's buying up like a, a, dub a dub lot thing. of technology. Do you think so? I think it's a dub dub thing, but I, I, but they, for a while they were showing Epic every single show, every single keynote Epic was showing up. Yeah. So the fact that they're not, I think has been, a, I think that nothing that's showing up is a, is a function of Apple regearing. They used to show, show a, an Epic, uh, game every, on every, every time. And Pokemon yeah. Go uses Unity, so they could just go back to that. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. interesting because the gaming world is now rapidly changing thanks to Microsoft's uh, intended acquisition of Activision Blizzard, putting them really in a sweet spot also for mobile gaming because uh, there's Call of Duty Mobile. And they got they get king with that, which is Candy Crush. Um, and I, I wonder if Apple is going like to ignore it and say, okay, fine, we're doing fine, we don't need to worry about it, or if they're going to try to... Push back. Well, they got you know, Candy Crush now, Leo. That's core to Apple's business. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it's right so now much money for Apple. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I it think really right does. now there's Candy Crush this... makes so much money. I think that's why Microsoft's paid so much money. Part of the reason, many, many reasons to do it, but getting into mobile in a strong way is yeah. good for Microsoft. Go ahead, Alex. Well, and also getting into NFTs and you know that type of thing. You know, these these games all have things that are digital assets in, that in people game are paying attention to. Yeah, yeah, in game yeah. purchase is something that I think a lot of people are really interested in. I think that oh, there's a lot know, so, of reasons why this makes sense. If we wanted to talk oh, yeah. about it, uh, esports, a cloud. Oh, yeah. I mean, on and on and on. In it's fact, cool. it's Brothers. good for Mac. It's good for Mac, uh, and I guess iOS in some ways too because. Uh, because of uh, Microsoft's Game Pass and cloud-based gaming business, uh, you'll be yeah, able to play the, I mean, on, the, on the Safari. So it's good for I, that too. I mean, if you look at if you look at Microsoft's purchasing over the last five years or or you know five or five years or so, it's been amazing. Like their yeah. their um, very acquisition, smart. very wise. very very smart. Yeah. Big big purchases, like big oh, yeah. big buys, LinkedIn. and they they yeah GitHub. LinkedIn and uh, yeah like just so many things that are really putting together Bethesda. a very very complex yeah. bit and it's something that I think that is one of Apple's weaknesses is that they don't they don't acquire more you know what do they do a lot of they don't like they the, do do they've said they do in the do. past they don't they like the do cultural it's difficult culturally for them yeah that's why they don't yeah. do big ones they do acquires more well, they do a lot of acquisitions in the sub 500 million, you know, like there's, there's a lot that happens down there, but, yeah. but not, they don't get into the, they're, they're very few. Once you go over a billion dollars, there's very few that Apple, yeah. Apple acquires. Yeah. This, uh, Microsoft's acquisition is uh, nearly 70 billion. If nearly, if you, if you can ignore 1.3 billion. <laughs> yeah. You know, the kids wanted 69. Leo. That was, that yeah, was the exactly. nice number that they totally skipped. I mean, but this the is game a deal. Huge, huge. But, I mean, but we're I charging think, most people 72, but we're going to 70, 69 for you. The, the fact that e, as big as that is, biggest acquisition ever, a month's worth of revenue for Microsoft, half of their cash yeah. position, and they're yeah. still and it still looks like a good business deal. Mm. It tells it's you great something. Great business. And, I think it is good. Yeah. And as they're happy to tell regulators, they're still smaller than Sony. And they're still number three <laughs> <laughs> right after Tencent and Sony. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think... There seems some consensus that we will see some very interesting things March, April. We may we see need your picks, Leo. Uh, we need your. Oh, you didn't ask me. I'm not a peerless prognosticator. I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm merely your host. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what I hope. I w the sooner the better okay. for a Mac Mini because I would love to see a high-end yes. M1 Max Mac Mini with 32 gigs yeah. or better, even 64 gigs of RAM. That would be a. I don't even need one. one. I'm going to buy one. I don't need one. I'm going to buy one. Exactly. No, yeah. I'm so excited. I got a 55-inch OLED display just waiting. 
just waiting to plug yeah. into it. You know, that's that 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 hits the head of it. With the Mac Mini, it's it's not so it's not even all about the power. It's about the be able the, the ability to use the accessories you want, have the layout you want. Exactly. But for me, it really is about I want a I want a triple screen setup. I want yep. three identical screens. And like and if I in the near future I buy like a huge like Samsung curved display, which is I keep lusting after. Like that's that's the sort of thing I want to be able to do. I don't want to hit these limitations of, of this was designed to be sort of a laptop in a box, so you can hit one or two screens with it and try not to get more than this much of Ethernet traffic because it doesn't like that. This is the sort of stuff we want. This is this is this is this is what will define the difference between again entry level Mac Pro. Super, super maxed out uh, Mac Mini. Are we just weird? Because you just said, Alex, and I think you're right. Nobody buys desktops anymore, and all four, all four of us. Maybe not you, well, Alex. No, not the rest. We're yeah. all looking at desktops again. We're I, not normal, Leo. We're not normal. That's all. <laughs> yeah, we're purely I'll, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was, that no, was I, no, please go ahead. All, all, I just, all I want to say is that go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think I, I, I think that because I have something very quick to say is that I do think that that that's one of the things that delineates the differences between the Mac market and the PC market. That the PC market is heavily, heavily, heavily desktops, whereas the Mac market it's nice, it's a big chunk of it, but it doesn't define the the space. So I think that that's that doesn't that doesn't define a worldwide trend. It defines one of the differences between Mac markets and PC markets. I think we'll definitely see an A15 iPhone SE 5G, that's pretty obvious. That's in March. Uh, mm -hmm. iPad Air, that's pretty obvious. That's in March. I agree with all you guys. Uh, the real question, the only real question mark is what are we going to see with M1? Will we see something in March? I'm thinking not. I'm thinking now they're going to hold off till June do the, well, but then they don't want the Mini to overlap in any way, even with a preview of the Mac Pro. So, so the Mini, I think, comes out this I'm going to move the Mini up. The yep. Mac Pro gets previewed. I'm trying and to the suppress. iMac and the Mac Pro are different in kind, so those can like they've done that before. 2017, which we got the the iMac Pro, and then we got the you know it's just it works. It works, yeah. Leo. I'm just trying to suppress my not not mingle my desire for a mini to come out in March or April, March. <laughs> I think <laughs> with with, with the actual facts of the matter, I think the Mac Pro is going to. I don't think we're going to hear about it until October. Really, not even a preview we'll in June. Well, I wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, they have so much know. to release. They have so much to Plenty release. They have so yeah. much. They have so many things that to 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 release. There's no reason to to Mac, announce something Pro that's not going to come out. iMac Pro in June, Mac Mini in maybe. A, oh, how about this? March Mac Mini, iMac Pro June, October. Well, they just let us organize Mac it. Pro. Yeah, we, we should, should just let, us, let us do they, it. We we'll know do what it. we're doing. Yeah, we'll what put we, it together. The big piece yeah. we're missing is we have no idea where any of these products stand. Whether they're ready. Yes, whether they can get the chips. We have details. No, no, where are they going to present from? I mean, are they going to do it from San Diego? Or are they going to do it from oh, yeah, Monterey? They were, are they, they were rotate. But then they didn't they stop in the last one. They didn't. I was really hoping they'd like do the world next. You know, do they're some, pretty committed uh, to California. It depends how long this all goes on. China. For oh, it's yeah. only a matter of time before the Great Wall. <laughs> of China. If the pandemic lasts another two years, they'll be on the Great Wall so fast. <laughs> Ni hao! Uh, but just to add a little bit of context to this, I was I was having a conversation once with one of the people on, on Apple's teams and talking about external displays, you know, because I, I really want Apple to go back to making an affordable external display. Um, and just like the, the numbers I got for how many, like if I ask on Twitter, 95% of people will say like external displays and external display support is the biggest thing that they want in iPad OS, they, they, on the Mac Mini, all of these things. The the amount of people who actually use external displays on on iOS is low single digits, and on Mac OS it's like mid teens. Uh, so like the, the difference between like our tech world and what mainstream people do who just open up their MacBook Air and type in the coffee shop, vastly different worlds. And uh, I think we get shuffled in behind those big products, so they have like their I mean, temples I'm, for the year. I'm down to seven. I mean, I'm down to seven screens. So I feel I feel very proud. Yes. Lisa, so the iMac, so. Lisa's iMac superannuated. It's really time to get at home. It's time to get her new one, and she has it paired with that screen that you want, Andy, the forty-nine inch curved yeah. wide screen. And it's really kind of ungainly. As she, that's how she likes to do it, though. And I'm, and I just told her, we will get you a mini. You can have two forty-nine inch displays. <laughs> yeah, and go all the way around you. You could have NASA like uh, yeah. Alex. Uh, I saw I, I saw someone with a setup where it was two of those screens stacked on top of each other yeah. with a webcam in the middle, and I'm like, 
aspirational. That's ones. basically what I have. Samsung ones with the fifty. Like the, with the fifty-five inch is two forty-nine yeah. stacked, but there's no bezel. It's just it's the size of two forty-nines, one on top of the other. It's great. You don't it's have the big curved gamer display. I don't have it. Ga I don't have it curved. Yeah. It's like a giant TV. I'm a, yeah, I'm a big fan of twenty-fours because I just put more of them up. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like I just no, no, I, 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 I little, it's I like, like little modular system. You know, it's like, like I have Legos. mixed feelings because like the, the bezels matrix. help with organization. Because with that big display, there's just windows everywhere floating but around. With, I think that's that. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like with Synergy, you, I'm just like I just drag my yeah, mouse over. Oh, you have different and computers and all those displays. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm have like, I have a bunch of different. I have like you know four, four computers and is and, Apple's uh, uh, Synergy not it's still not out right? I have no. it on. I'm using Synergy now. No, no, the Apple version. Universal Control. Universal oh no, no, control. but but the problem for me is that I'm Universal Control. I think is really uh, it's well, it's I'm mixing and matching a lot of yeah, stuff yeah. so that it's not you want you want Windows and yeah yeah no I've used Synergy for years yeah I know really I learned nice. it from you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm <laughs> glad they still make yeah. it. I mean I I feel like it's kind of orphaned, it's gotten but it's gotten better and better they actually. It. Yeah, it's really smooth. Yeah, it's it's going over the network, which is <laughs> yeah really weird. Yeah, no, I, see, I I I love. I actually have like four uh, like of the identical like Dell uh, mid range monitors because twenty four yep. inch monitors. Because I'm, I'm I'm with you, Alex. The, the only thing is, I just don't want to look like a damn day trader when people come in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. Like, you do. You, do. you say diamond hands, diamond hands, stock to the moon, to the moon, Bloomberg, to the moon. Bloomberg terminal. They're buying, then sell, sell. They're selling, Sim, then buy, buy. Synergy is from now from Simless S Y M L E S S. Dot com and the nice thing is it's cross platform. I didn't I didn't see this works on a Raspberry Pi too, so you could have one of those screens could be you know you could move it over to the little Pi screen. So yeah, that's a that's a really good solution. I agree with you, Alex. I'm glad to know it's uh, still working for you. I still have a I still have a KVM just in case. <laughs> Every once in a while, synergy <laughs> comes up and it doesn't really sync right, and you have to go in yeah. and touch something. Yeah. So so I still have the KVM in the system, but but I uh, but I just generally use all right. Synergy. Now I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into all of our carefully laid prognostications. What about because uh -huh. at some point this year, Apple is supposed to announce a VR headset. When do they? Where do oh, they? So stand I really, I really thought about it. I think I think we may be a little early. I think we may be a year early, a year fifteen months early. I think. I mean, I think that. Um, I, I think it might take more time. It, it could come out. It, it'll come out in, at WWDC. So it'll either we'll either see it in June or we'll see it the next June. I think that it's definitely within one, you know, within this year or next year. But I'm not sure uh, if they're if they're really ready to do it. There's a bunch of things again. There's a bunch of parts of that runway that they still need to construct, like a wider solution. So one of the problems with AR is not just the AR, it's creating the content for AR. And a lot of us deal with this of, of all the, it's still a pretty rough system to build the content that you will see. It's fine for people to buy all these things, but they have to have something to do with them. Um, and so, and right now, most of the 3D software programs don't really do USDZ very well. And that's a core piece of AR working. And so I think that there could be a chance that in addition to hardware and other things that they're sorting out, that having a little bit more runway into 2023 would allow them to kind of fill out that. And really where that would happen again is putting USDZ into the office apps because what it'll do is it'll drive demand for the for the geometry. And then that yeah. builds this huge area. All that stuff will be available with millions of models will be available in 15 months if they put it into Keynote. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I I agree. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily say that I wouldn't put money on them not releasing something or showing off something in 2022, but I don't think it's imminent. I don't think there's any rush for Apple to get involved in this. Uh, I think that the earliest we would see something is a developer announcement at WWDC and not mm -hmm. availability to consumers for quite a while after that. I, 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 I keep thinking that I can't see this happening other than Apple releases a super expensive headset that is really attended just for developers and just for uh, researchers yeah, to, to, to lay to lay the ground because this is remember uh, they are they're not they're they're going to go for something a lot more ambitious than uh, what Oculus is doing right now. Meaning here is a blank canvas. Developers, by all means, put your games, put your VR experiences here. I really think that they're going to want to come up with a paradigm for virtual reality computing. And this is going to be a lot like how, what is the language going to be? What is the interface going to be? How do you switch between apps without making people feel as though they're being thrown into a ditch? And I think that that's going to take a lot of time. And they, they might even go as far as to make, to do sort of an OS 
OS 10 sort of release, if you remember how that one rolled out, where they it was a public thing, they couldn't hide it. It was a public beta first, and then it was three, four, five editions before. Yes, you could print. Yes, you could access. <laughs> you could ac access file volumes. Yes, it w it was basically stable. Yes, we're we're done messing around with the interface. Now at uh, Mac OS 10.4 or 10.5, maybe this is finally the we had to build this thing from the ground up, and now we're done building. It took us two or three years. So yeah, I I, I hope that Apple is looking forward to creating like the next thirty billion dollars of Apple store revenue they're not just trying to sell hardware that really uh, it's like an it's like an oculus only 10 times more expensive but you get a much better much better frame rate much better resolution they really need to if they, they really need to wait until they can emphatically create an apple device not just uh, a, a, an also ran device uh, yeah, I think that they. I think there's a, a clear understanding of why it's taking so long. Is that, that there's a clear understanding that it has to come. The, the launch has to go perfectly. Yeah. You know, because everyone's already failed so many times. Yeah. And so I think that that is going to be a real key piece. And if if they really do hit sixty or one hundred twenty frames per second at eight K per eye, it's going to be. I mean, it it that those kinds of frame rates and resolutions are a completely different experience than anyone has seen by any other headset. So it'll be really interesting to see if they're able to actually pull that off. Yeah, it's still going to be very difficult, though, because I, I Apple, I think, has done a, one of my biggest complaints about Apple historically is almost inoperative at this point, where they used to, uh, five as late as five years ago, their motto seemed to be go, go be poor someplace else, that it would be. It would be a missed opportunity if they decided to create an aspirational piece of technology, a brand new paradigm for people who can afford to spend three thousand dollars on a pair of miracle goggles. Uh, the I'll, I'll, I think the Apple Watch, the, the the biggest thing they ever did with it was to figure out a way to manufacture it so that's competitive, not just with other uh, other uh, uh, other watches, but of, of other fitness level things. Not just here is a here is Garmin's five hundred dollar GPS driven. Uh, uh, a, a, a smartwatch. Here is a hundred dollar band. Here's a hundred and fifty dollar band. Here's a hundred and eighty dollar band with a color screen. And Apple is competing very, very well with that. They're making phones that compete extremely well with Android space, which is a hell of a thing, a hell of an accomplishment. So I, I would be, I would be very, I would be very pleased to see them come out with first a version of uh, AR VR that really, really works well and emphatically states, here's why this thing is not just a mindless gadget. I would be not completely satisfied until two or three years later when they come out with the version, the Air, <laughs> the $400, $500 version where it is conceivable Vision that Air. most, yeah, exactly. I, I, I think that the, the, the problem is to do it the way, at the resolution and, and re, the, the market for a reasonably good headset is pretty saturated at three hundred dollars, and so the the issue is is that is that with the quests and with uh, and those are really good. It's it's really hard for them to distinguish themselves there. I think that the my guess is the first headset will be somewhere between two and three thousand dollars, and if if they if Apple makes a headset under a thousand dollars, I'd be blown away. I just don't think that they can distinguish themselves from the 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 stuff that's already there, and I think that that's what they're going to want to do. And so I th I think that this is that's my guess is that it's not going to ever go below a thousand. You know, it, I'd be blown away if they did. I mean. They, I mean, yeah. kudos to them, but I think that they're not going to be able to do the low frame rate or the, I mean, and so I think it's going to be one to 3,000 is probably the range yeah. forever. You, you got, you, I have you a guess too. About you go ahead. I'm sorry, very quickly. You, you, got me, you got me thinking about how in the lead up for the, the launch of the iPad, nobody thought, oh, $999 cheapest. And then when they broke that by $400, that was the gasp in the room. So yeah. always prepare to be surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Renee. Yeah, I was just going to add that Apple typically introduces products that they that are higher, more the premium category, because that lets them put technology in the market they couldn't afford to otherwise, and then pay it down. And as they pay it down, they push it down to lower end products. But there was a great Vice article, um, I think it was today or yesterday, that was showing Apple compared to Android phones. When you look at an iPhone, even a thousand dollar iPhone that gets software updates for five years, has a chipset that can last five years, the cost of owning it ends up being like a hundred and something bucks a year, where the cost of much cheaper phones uh, can be two hundred, three hundred dollars a year because they only last two, three years. So I think that's that's how they get they provide value to the premium market, but then also use that as a way to drive costs down to have a more mainstream product because they won't make money just selling premium headsets. Yeah. That's not a and I think that, scalable business the, for them. And I think it's less about recouping. I think there were some articles that it might have been from uh, Mr. German about them trying to recoup all their R and D. And I don't think that's really the point. I think that for Apple. The re the rejection rate is so high on some of these on, on Apple products. Yeah. I mean, there, there was some point, you know, so that what happens is when it first comes out, 
it's, you know, they're just trying to figure out how to actually produce it. And so it gets really expensive because they're actually turn, throwing away, turning, recycling all of these parts that aren't coming out as good at, 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 to the level at what Apple expects. And so I, I think I heard a, uh, there was a point where the, the trackpad, the new trackpad that Apple had designed, the return rate in the factory was 40%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like it was, and, and so it was, you know, and that's the, those are the kind of things that, um, uh, I think that's why these start pretty expensive is just that they're make, they're so inefficient about it and then they get more efficient. Uh, Gervid's a piece last week in Bloomberg said it would be delayed probably even as long as into next year. It was originally targeted for WWDC in June, followed by a release later in the year. But development challenges, I'm quoting German's Bloomberg piece, but development challenges related to overheating cameras and software have made it harder to stay on track, said the people who asked not to be identified because the matter is private. That could push the announcement until the end of 2022 or later with the products hitting the shelves by 23. I don't. I don't see any. If it. If we don't see it There's in no June, hurry. we're not going to see it until the next June. Yeah. Like it's. You yeah. have to. De you have to release it for developers, developers at have the to developer have conference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, and there's yeah. no hurry. The, Let's get it right. right? Absolutely. Yeah. When the, absolutely. When the Apple Watch was first announced, um, there was before, before it came out. Like again, none of this happened with the iPhone. Nothing was like, oh, there's a fierce battle between P1 and P2. Steve scratched the screen. Develop like the, like all of this drama happened, but it just wasn't widely reported. But by the time of the Apple Watch, it started to be, and it was like, oh, the battery life isn't long enough. Apple's not able to do. It. They're not meeting their deadlines on this. And then Apple announced it, and it was they announced it in September, and it came out the following March, and that gave them six months of sort of buffer to get it out. And I'm sure they're gonna we're gonna have reports think, like this up yeah. until they announce it. And then after yeah. that, we're going to see the, the first version is not going to be good. Like it's not going to be great. It's going to be like the original iPad, the original Apple watch. And then version two is going to be way, way better the way the iPhone 3G, 3G was, iPad 2 was, and the second Apple watch was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, th I think they're going to have to ma really manage expectations. If uh, if if I'm right in my what I see as the roadmap for this product, and that they decide that we're going to have an expense. We're not going to care so much about the expense. We're going to be putting this in the hands of people who want to write software for the next generation of stuff. So long as they say that, look, we are not pretending that this is going to be. There's going to be a classroom full of classrooms full of uh, twenty to thirty students, each with an Apple VR headset on. That the, we are. This is the first generation of stuff. It's still experimental. They, even if they were to say this is a hardware beta, uh, you are participating in a program. You have to be. A, a, you have to be a registered Apple developer in order to even order these. I, it's not. It's not so much that it would. Uh, give them extra room for making mistakes, but it would also tamp down expectations. So people would, we would see all these YouTube videos of these wonderful experiences and people would have these hands-on experiences one-on-one -on -one with these things, but they would not be thinking, oh my God, $3,000 $3, and I can't even, I can't even like sideload my own, my own MP4 files to watch my own movies on the thing. What are they even thinking? Well, and I, and I do think that the, uh, uh, at $3,000, they'll sell as many as they can make. Of course, <laughs> like, you know yeah. it's it's you know it'll just be as many as they can push out. Though people will buy and they'll become developers just to buy in them. You know, be Apple fan, high demand. An Apple fan cast with it all. But the other the other interesting thing is that this is not a this is like an Apple TV and the glasses are going to be like an Apple Watch. Neither of these are an iPhone or a Mac. They're not going to be large scale developer platforms. Like they're going to be very focused. Like like the VR is going to be very focused on entertainment and experiences, the same way the Apple TV is. And the glasses are going to be very focused on convenience and notification and glanceable data the way the watch is. And neither of those are anywhere nearly the size of the developer platforms that the iPhone or the Mac is. Yeah, it's it's there've not been a lot of apps developed exclusively for the watch. Yeah. Right. Well, because the watch is like a two second experience. Yeah. <laughs> like you, and it's hard to develop for a two second experience. Yeah. And we can't design the watch face. Like the watch face would be a huge market. And right. we're not allowed to design for the watch UI face. Kit. You're that. still stuck in watch kit. Yeah, which yeah. Is, and Apple uses UI kit. So yeah. let's take a little and break. The glasses are going to be worse. They're not going to let you have UI kit on the glasses. You think they are? I got an NFT of a bridge kit. to sell you. <laughs> yeah. Or glasses repair kit. Because you can buy those at the grocery <laughs> store on the way out. I noticed that. All right. Let's, take a, exactly. let's exactly. take a break. <laughs> I'm getting punchy now, obviously. Yes. Our show today <laughs> brought to you by <laughs> IT Pro TV. Oh, yes. Are you an IT Pro? Would you like to be? IT Pro TV has something for both of you. IT Pros, of course, you need to keep your skills up to date. You need to learn new skills. You need to recertify all of that. IT Pro is a great place to do. And and do it. And if you are looking to get into IT, now's the time, man. This is a great 
growth market for IT professionals in all areas of IT. Maybe you're not sure where to get started. Well, you don't have to worry where to start. You can go straight to IT Pro TV. They have the knowledge, the certificates you need to break into the IT world. In fact, this month is a great month because January theme at IT Pro TV is all about getting started in IT. So you'll have a great start to the new year. If you want to dip your toes into IT, check out the following courses to get started. CompTIA's ITF Plus and A Plus certs. Parenthetically, I might mention IT Pro TV is the official video partner for CompTIA. So you're getting the official training there. A Plus, the desktop support cert, Linux Essentials. Who doesn't want to know that these days? Microsoft 365, MS 900 cert. And this is one thing I like about IT Pro TV. They keep up with the times. They're always recording new material in their studios. They've got seven of them in their Gainesville uh, studio, that uh, facility complex, I guess it is now, which means they can record a lot of content every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So when new certs come out, like the you know Microsoft's replaced MCSE with a bunch of new certs, they're ready with them. Hands-on PC build, another one you might want to start with getting started in IT. That's in their From the Bench series. Cisco CCT routing and switching, that's a 100 490. Oh, and I know you want to become an Apple certified support professional, ACSP. That's a, that's a great cert, too. And of course, they're all the way up to date. This covers Mac OS 11, of course. Now, if you're worried that maybe it might be dull, might be boring, in fact, you might have that, had that experience at other IT training places. No, not with IT Pro TV. They've got the best. Look how nice those people are. Those are their edutainers, they call them professionals in the field so they know their business but they also know how to make it fun they're very enthusiastic they love this stuff uh, all the courses are chunked up into 20 to 30 minute increments so you can watch them at lunch whenever you got a moment i kind of like that that's how i work a little bit at a time but if you want to binge you could binge for a while uh seven studios as i mentioned the content goes from the studio in 24 hours so they're they're the most up to date i think that's another thing sometimes you'll you'll get a book and it's out of date or you'll go to a class, the teacher doesn't know anything from, you know, today. IT Pro TV is absolutely au courant. They're with it. They're hip. They're now, man. If you're thinking about getting into IT, get the introduction you need with IT Pro TV. ITPro.tv slash MacBreak for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription. As long as you stay active, that, that deal stays active. That's, that's amazing. Mac Break 30. Mac Break 30 is the offer code. Make sure you take advantage of that. ITPro.tv slash Mac Break. Go there. Let them know you saw it here. And use the code Mac Break 30 for an additional 30% off the lifetime of your active subscription. ITPro.tv. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey with ITPro.tv. ITPro.tv slash Mac Break. Don't forget the offer code Mac Break 30. Thank you, ITPro.tv. Uh, so Apple is trying to deal with the, uh, you know, unfortunate backlash over AirTags. Uh, they have now launched a new personal safety user guide. What you need to know about device and data access when your personal safety is at risk. Um, if you have time to read this before you get mugged, good. <laughs> but but. <laughs> Well, one of the other, I mean, like we, we've heard a lot about the uh, stalking issues with AirTags. And I'll once again, just point out en passant that people are discovering these because of Apple system. Like, like uh, AirTags are the dumbest way right. yeah, to track somebody. Use, use a Galaxy tag, use a right. tile, use a GPS kit. But the other problem that people have is like, there's some people who are really angry that the theft protection isn't stronger. And that was a deliberate choice by Apple. Like these are not, these are supposed to be find my lost stuff, not not track somebody, not stalk somebody, but also not track down your stolen stuff. There is a huge problem, and it's not new, of these hero complexes where, where people get something stolen and then they track them down. I'll and save they end up getting you. killed or hurt yeah. in a secondary encounter Don't. when they would have been just like, it's just stuff. It's your wallet. It is just like we, we saw, like, we, we, there's, there's headlines this week too about people using it to recover trucks and recover other stuff. Just leave that to the professionals, please. Yeah. Like, your life is way more important than any bauble that you might have attached an air It's to. unfortunate that Apple's gotten so much attention because, as you, as you point out, the reason people know they have air tags is because of all the safety feature, features Apple's put into it. There have always been ways to track you uh, better than, more accurate, 
more uh, invisible than what the, an AirTag is. So I don't think this is an un, a new problem, and I don't think it's a problem unique to Apple by any means. But good on them. Yeah. The personal safety guide actually yeah. is timely because it's it's much more than just AirTags. It is it is uh, you know safety and privacy tools, how not to get fished, uh, you know uh, some really important stuff that I know no one will read. Set up two factor authentication, set up an account recovery contact, you know block calls and messages. Uh, it'd be nice if you could just get you know everybody in your family to read this. Before they bug you, you just have a clippy, an Apple privacy clippy that pops up on your device and walks you through Apple yeah. stuff because it's so non-obvious. Most of these features, yeah. Uh, just read the whole darn thing. They do at the end, which is good. They have checklists, so you can um, kind of maybe that's a good way to get people into it. How to what to do if you think someone may have access to your device or accounts? I get a call almost every week, usually from a woman with a you know bad ex who's being stalked. You know, uh, maybe he got into their phone and is still in their phone, things like that. This is really good advice. I guess now I have somewhere I can send people. How to stop sharing your location with people and apps you previously shared with. Down the same lines, I think. Uh, and how to stop sharing with somebody. Let's see, that's the same one, isn't it? Wait a minute. How to stop sharing your location ah, uh, with people and apps you previously shared with. And then how to stop sharing with someone you previously shared with. I guess sharing other stuff. Um, I, I hope they beef this up. You can download it as a PDF, but it's also an Apple support page. I think if you search for personal safety user's guide, user guide Apple, you'd find it pretty quickly. Um, good idea, Apple. Let's, let's enhance it, though. There should be more here. Um, and send it to all yeah. your friends and family. That should be a living document. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be it'd be nice if it, if it were even part of a if it were available on iBooks as something you could just simply there's download a PDF, your, right? so you could download it and put it in iBooks. Absolutely, yeah. that's a that's a good good idea. Um, it, they offer a uh, direct link to a PDF. Um, apparently, there's a problem with cloud syncing. There has been since day one, since Mobile Me, since, since Mobile Steve, Me and a flame Steve Jobs flamethrower, Steve Jobs flamethrower. <laughs> uh, this is from yesterday's 9 to 5 Mac. iCloud syncing issues are plaguing third-party apps as Apple stays silent. This is Can a I pitch a, you on something, Leo. Yes, I have pitch this idea. Me. So I, I spent uh, any amount of time that you spend on slash, you know, slash r slash Android or slash r slash Apple is is too much in many many ways. But I was just going over the list of persistent bugs that exist in Android and iOS. Things that like DAX on pixels and iCloud syncing issues. Things that just go on and on and on for like an unbelievable amount of time. We need a Project Zero for annoying, persistent iOS and Android bugs. Like just some someone at Google who goes through and documents these, and if you don't fix them in 30 days, they nasty blog you all over the internet. There's, there's a regular that like there's a regular post on slash r slash Android and slash r slash Pixel Six saying, guys, Google may not be reading this. You probably should. Put it on their bug tracker. <laughs> you know, like they have a place to tell you, Google, about this stuff, not Reddit. I keep filing. I keep filing every week. I just yeah. file away. And, but I agree know. that, you know, there's a, there's a uh, they call it responsible disclosure. There's a clock that starts ticking when you disclose yeah. a security vulnerability. Why isn't there a clock that starts ticking when you disclose a show-stopping bug? Or even just an annoyance. Not even showstoppers because like, frust yeah, annoyances, like frustrations are the thousand cuts. Like, yes, a crasher is bad, but e like Apple and Google are really good at checking their metrics on crashers. They, they check all the time. But the frustrators are the ones that really wear you down over time. Just so, like, I, I, you try to search for an app in Spotlight, you don't get the, and you know the app is there and it doesn't show up. And Spotlight's been around since like, what, iOS 3 or something? It's just, ah, it's calling. Well, and CloudKit has been around for the, forever and ever. And yeah. I even remember in the early days of CloudKit, many developers saying, oh, don't whatever you do, do your own syncing. Don't rely on CloudKit because yeah. it's unreliable. It seems to have gotten better there, but maybe not. Good, good notes just posted as an example this uh, support article. Why does my iCloud sync show a request failed with a status code 503 error? Uh, <laughs> apparently, we're getting many reports, they say, of the error lingering on causing sync failures. The issue is not apparent to us, and we've escalated the case to Apple technical support. Seems it's happening to other apps as well. In fact, there's a big long thread <laughs> on CloudKit service unavailable error 503. So if you're getting it, don't 
Don't blame the dev. Don't blame the app, I guess. <laughs> file a, you know, file a bug report. I guess. I don't know. RIP radar. Yeah. Do a radar. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we know what this is about? Do we know this is ha why this is happening? doesn't seem no. to be universal. Yeah, I haven't ever Everybody seen comments. it. Yeah. Yep. Um, I did get somebody calling the other day saying my iCloud, maybe this is related, it keeps asking for my password. And I, he said, I brought my phone to the Apple store. And the genius said, uh, yeah, your iCloud's uh, corrupt. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I said he didn't try to fix it. He didn't help you fix it. No, he just told me what he just said. That's, was, that's not good. That's not. Bad I genius. said bad genius. Yeah, sub genius. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I wonder. I don't know the cloud. The cloud. This, the cloud. The cloud. Yeah. There was this interesting bug I'm having <clears throat> where <clears throat> sorry, uh, Safari no longer supports drag and drop in the YouTube. Um, customizer. So like if you want to go and move around your YouTube homepage, it just selects the text and graphics instead, which is super annoying. Works fine in Chromium, does not work in WebKit. I filed a bug with Chrome, the Chrome team. I filed a bug with, you know, Radar. And it's just like Google's like, yeah, we just don't care that much about Safari. And I mean, like, I appreciate your frankness, <laughs> but that's the only browser that everybody on iOS uses. And that's not an insignificant platform. And Apple's like, we don't have anything to do with YouTube. And I'm like, I appreciate your frankness, but you know, YouTube is still a website you're responsible for when, for rendering. Um, and that's just like the world we live in. And I'm like, you guys have users. Like, it, like it's just, get the stuff fixed. I guess nothing much to say about this. It's just, you know, it is. It is what it is. But just be aware Complain. of it. Complain. Yeah. Get Marquez to tweet about it Sco and then the whole thing's yeah, right. will come out. <laughs> Scooter X uh, says the latest tweet bot for iOS added an iCloud sync status page. Just Rather than them saying, we know, we know, we can't do anything about it, we're sorry, they actually put a page up. This, here's the status. It's not just you. Number of countries now, uh, as we mentioned last week, are pushing Apple to offer third-party app store payments. A Dutch regulator has responded to Apple's uh, attempt to solve this, saying... It's not enough. Apple has failed to satisfy the requirements set by the Netherlands Authority for Consumer and Markets regarding payment systems. This is uh, following an investigation to Apple's statements of January 15th. Apple now has to pay ACM the first penalty payment of 5 million euros. This is the, uh, the dating apps. <laughs> this is so funny. The, yeah. the, the, the Dutch need to date. The, the Dutch dating need to date. Apps. And this is stopping reproductive... <laughs> I think it's because dating app providers among the Dutch. They are the ones who complain. So ACM, <laughs> the Authority for Consumers and there Markets. There was an amazing tweet that. yesterday about this saying, you mean Apple has failed to satisfy the the um, very obscure requirements of a company. You won't tell them what they need to do to actually fix the situation and just demands that they do it immediately. Yeah. Thought, uh, oh, according so to the right. ACM, the most important failure on Apple's part is it's failed to adjust its conditions as a result of which, see if you can follow this, Dating app providers are still unable to use other payment systems. Uh, at the moment, dating app providers can merely express their interest. <laughs> so in other words, they didn't implement it. They just said, hey, let us know if you'd like to. Though, that's, that's like a very short timeline to implement a whole feature. Okay. In addition, Apple has raised several barriers for dating app providers to the use of third-party payment systems. That, too, is at odds with ACM's requirements. For example, Apple seemingly forces app providers to make a choice, either refer to payment systems outside the app or to an alternative payment system. That is not allowed. Providers must be able to choose both options. Um, Apple's informed, ACM has informed Apple that statements do not satisfy the requirements. Uh, they're still obligated to respond. If they fail to do so, they'll have to pay, get ready for this, 5 million euros a week up to a maximum of 50 million it's Tim euros. Cook's coffee budget. Come on. I know. You get <laughs> it's like, it's like, that's like a, it's like a day in the Netherlands, in the Amsterdam store, you know, like it's. <laughs> okay. So you think that they're not ignoring it, obviously, that it's just not happening as fast as. Are they going to pull dating apps from the Netherlands as their response? Are they going to just take their ball and go home? That would be interesting, wouldn't it? What a, what a response that would be. 
Because then, I mean, yeah. then I guess what will happen is some other app will come along and say, well, it's yeah. us too. And then they'll, the, the whole thing begins again. Well, they had no video games in Brazil for a while because they couldn't, um, they couldn't uh, adequately address Brazil's requirements for rating systems for video games. And that caused huge amounts of piracy, but they just effectively could not have video games in Brazil. Regionalization. Okay. The internet was this big international thing, Leo. And we had all these companies for a while that were just working completely internationally. We all had the exact same features in every country. And now regionalism is going to make nobody know exactly what service or, or goods they can actually get anywhere ever again. Yeah. Okay. But it, I mean, all right. I don't want to get in this conversation. No, like I, Apple should just solve oh, this oh. internationally. Like they're going to play. They're going to play like games in in Japan or Korea. All or a country can do. They all just a country let us go can to websites. Is say we have a problem. They can't. Yes. It's, it's, there's no global mechanism. I guess there kind of is, but there's not much of a global mechanism for doing this. So all we a nation shield. can do is say, hey, you got to fix this or we're going to fine you. Um, yeah. I just, I just seem to remember more than once Apple uh, waving away a certain certain PR problems by saying, we, we obey whatever the local laws are in the countries in which we operate unless it costs us unless money. Unless we don't like it. <laughs> unless we don't like it then. <laughs> Well, unless it's the hot, well, it's the Dutch. With the internet purchases. <laughs> if it's the Dutch, well, hell. Uh, Ericsson is suing Apple in three German courts, the Netherlands and Brazil. This is a 5G patent issue. Ericsson says uh, we have the patent uh, to this uh, technology. Uh, and Apple's filed a counter complaint oh, with the ITC, the international. So there's, there's the international there. ITC, uh, International Trade Commission, over three patents. And all of a sudden declared itself a big fan of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of yeah. <laughs> Texas. Aren't uh, they using Qualcomm modems? Like, I don't understand why this is an Apple thing. Yeah. They're using, they, they finally moved to bog standard Qualcomm X60 and X55 modems. Isn't Ericsson's beef with Qualcomm? I'm very confused. I don't know. Are they franned? I think they're trying to get up. They're trying to go up the food chain. You know, like they're not. Get money from Apple getting, to Qualcomm? Yeah. Well, they're trying to get Qualcomm to give them what they wanted by going through. Oh, Apple. going through Apple. Oh. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know. Erickson, according to Foss Patents, would have no benefit whatsoever from disrupting Apple's business through injunctions. It just wants to be paid reasonable royalties on its patent portfolio, taking into account what others are already paying Erickson. Apple, by contrast, pays only a very small amount of patent royalties on each iPhone it sells with Qualcomm, getting far more than anybody else through it. Uh, though its patent portfolio is not even battle tested, so I don't know if this is through. I, this is a Qualcomm. Remember, friend, uh, but, but I think that, idea that it was never. But I think this was part of that negotiation. That the, the other lawsuits with Qualcomm that did that did end up limiting what Qualcomm got. So I think this is a chain reaction from Apple's victories with Qualcomm. Yeah, uh, I, I, they're also suing in the Western. Uh, Ericsson is also suing in the Western District, but Apple likes the Eastern District. <laughs> It'd be nice if we had these companies that we, uh, that we like, they, the whole idea of FRAND was that you have technologies that we can choose to use to make the infrastructure of the entire global communications network. But in so doing, you've got to make them available to everybody else. If we choose you, it comes with responsibility. Everyone's like, yeah, 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 choose us. It'll be great. We promise it'll be fine. And then they just, the minute they get chosen, they sue everybody. Yeah, it's, I, I almost don't even want to report on it, but I, I guess we, we have yeah. to. And I, could nationalize, I will internationalize. I the refer patents. you to fosspatents.com <laughs> if you really want the the, the we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to give you check ins every every couple months for the next three years. Oh, God, yeah, <laughs> at least three. <laughs> Another speed bump for Apple's self driving car project. Um, <laughs> it's a deep within Mark Gurman's newsletter, which I don't subscribe to, so I'll just have to. <laughs> it's. Uh, I'll paraphrase. You only if you subscribe, you only get the 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 uh, the, 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 ple the peasant version. You have to also subscribe to Bloomberg. To I get, know. Like, I get. I subscribe to Bloomberg. <laughs> I yeah. get the peasant version. The other in the other direction. So oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I have so many subscriptions. <laughs> um. D here it is. Deja vu. Apple loses another car team manager. Joe Bass was head of the software engineering program for Apple's car team until recently. With Bass's departure, writes Kerman, nearly the entire Apple car management team in place just one year ago is gone. Of course, Doug Field, the, the best known, and, uh, and uh, Lynch took over yeah. for uh, Doug. Um, mm. Bass had reported to Field before moving under Kevin Lynch. So where is Bass heading? 
Facebook, I'm sorry, Meta platforms, along with more than 100 of his ex-Apple peers over the past several months. That's why Apple's putting out those stock bonuses, trying to keep people from departing. Yeah. Goodness gracious. I think I think one of the one of the largest, most powerful vectors for COVID in the Silicon Valley is just engineers being poached from company to company <laughs> on on a different AI project. If you poach them properly, COVID is uh, is killed, I believe. You, 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 you got to hold them at 165 <laughs> degrees for at least 10 minutes. Ah, yeah. It's the old sous vide technique. Yeah. 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 So uh, German writes, what does this mean for Apple's car project? Well, it cements my theory that 2022 is a make or break year. If the company is set... Uh, on unveiling its plans for a fully autonomous car by 2025, they're going to need to get the ball rolling with few additional mishaps or departures. That makes sense, right? It takes three years. They still have Dan Dodge, Leo. Okay, I don't know what that means, but I'm, I'll take The founder of QNX, it. he went there to <laughs> okay. work on, uh, okay. on real-time software for the Apple car. So they still have Dan Dodge. It sounds like a Star... I'll be honest, it sounds like a Star Wars reference, that's all. They all still have Rumsleg. <laughs> no. So <laughs> Dan, Dan Dodge was uh, the founder and I president think, of QNX. BlackBerry oh, okay. bought them. He went to Apple to work on the car. His vice president, Sebastian Marino Mess, went to Apple, worked on security, and now he's doing device intelligence. You know, really, really good. He's far like far too much Craig's about this people. stuff, obviously. Well, well I also easy. think I, I also think that the the, the, the future of self driving cars keeps moving too. So I think that you're kind of yeah. going through yeah. like we think that this is there. I mean, I think yeah, that what's next, the really? consensus yeah. is starting to really build around the fact that. Google was way out ahead of everybody. Is that you're not going to really want a driving space. You just want a going, a sitting space or a hanging out space, and not really having a you know. And and Google's been talking about that for you know a long time, um, and everyone thought they were crazy. But it's starting to become more and more like, do people who want self driving cars really want to actually get behind the wheel? You know, is that the when you're because you got to throw the ball to where the re receiver is going to be five years from now, <laughs> you know, like it's, so it's, it's a, you know, it's a complicated and very expensive endeavor. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, and I think that as they move through that, and also as you change the upper part of a management system, like putting uh, Lynch in, you know, what happens after that is oftentimes a fallout of the fo folks below because they weren't put that in that position or they just don't like the way, the direction that the new man, the new leader is taking it. Uh, it's kind of a light uh, week this week. Let's take a break and then we'll talk about Amy Klobuchar. How about that? I need a oh, refresher fun. before we talk about antitrust action because the bill is now headed uh, and, and I'll give you time to look up what comes next after <laughs> it, it's voted out of the Judiciary Committee. It's one of the bills, right? Not both of them. It's one of the bills. It's the Senate bill has, got, has now been approved by committee. So what's next? I don't know. Oh, I think what has to happen is Senate leadership has to bring it to the floor for a vote. Well, debate I'm the Googling vote. Googling how a bill becomes. A, yeah, will you please? Law, yeah, ba law, basically, law. basically got it got the co the committee marked it up and now put now moves it forward to the uh, to the whole Senate toward. But leadership has to approve it, and so we'll, exactly. We'll ba 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 the, but the the fact the fact that it made it out of committee means that okay, this is serious. Yeah, it's 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 sort it's sort of like okay, the 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 DA has 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 formally charged you. Now we actually go, have to go forward with this and decide whether this is a, a good idea or not. And the and this is the law. This is the one that says companies cannot favor their own uh, right. stuff if, over other companies, competing companies. And this particularly would affect Apple's app store. Yeah, there, there are seven, I think, seven specific callouts in the bill. And each one of them seems to have like, uh, seems to be specifically directed at there's Amazon. Here's what we want you to knock right. off. Apple, knock off this. Google, this crap with prioritizing, uh, 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 prioritizing your own products and search over others is going to stop. So yeah, this is bad for everybody. This is, this is why it's being so heavily lobbied. This is why, for God's, uh, for God's sakes, Ted Cruz got 40 minutes with Tim Cook he harangued uh, him. on the phone the day I before. I think he harangued him for 40 minutes. 40 yep. minutes with Tim Cook. What What are you... By the way, a CEO's time yeah. is very, very valuable. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in time that is. But what was he saying? T Ted, you, you can't... Ted, you can't vote for... Anyway, it was 16 to 6. I think Ted did vote for it. The American Innovation and Choice Online Act now moves to the Senate floor where it will probably die an ignominious death with all the other bills on the Senate floor. But we'll uh, see. We'll see. Functional democracy was so over. This, this one has bipartisan support for various reasons, but it has some support. Yeah. So uh, this is this is the spanking. It's got a lot of money. 
lot of money behind it. Yeah, it's the spanking <laughs> of the tech industry is what it is. It's the, uh, yeah. The, the big tech. The fleecing. The fleecing of the tech industry fleecing. is what I would call it. Yeah. <laughs> So the, you, know, you got to get you got you got a campaign year coming up. Got to got to fill those coffers. Oh, you <laughs> so. think that's what it's all about? Oh yeah. Donate. Oh, yeah. Buy my vote. Uh, they're all buying. They're all all the votes are bought. Yeah. <laughs> so buy my vote. in this case, I mean, because because if we so were talking about things begins that, now, right? If we were talking about things that actually affected people, the cable companies would be up there. Like because oh, it I is know. they that's are they are. One. Functionally yeah. Yeah. slowing the entire country down, like yeah. literally during COVID, people can't go to school, they can't go to work, they can't. And why? Because of the cable companies. But what are we talking about? Something that doesn't affect the average person. <laughs> so, well, like you know, like, the, like, and the people behind this give them a lot are of money. a lot of small tech companies like Proton small, Mail and Sonos and who small er smaller not, not tiny. small yeah Yelp not, not yeah but who, who, small er say, you know, not Lamborghinis you know Yelp says Google yeah. favors its uh, its recommendations but over these aren't ours. small companies these right. aren't like mom these, when people think small they think small shops these smaller. are still no, hundreds still of millions or billions of dollars companies. a company yeah. you know this is this is this is a complaint from people you know this is like you know, actors and baseball players wanting to get paid more, not like uh, union yeah. workers at the at the where you know at the Good warehouse. Point, so, yeah, yeah. The, the, the only difference is that the FCC already has regulatory authority, and they're already basically have a, they, they've made the same announcements that Klobuchar has been making right. uh, as head of antitrust. Mm -hmm. So it's, right. it's not quite as imperative. And there is a lot of motion to get make sure this gets done before midterms because if all I got to, if five or six seats move one way or another, the the ability to get some, an agenda item move to the forefront or banish to the land of, uh, of ghosts and winds per, uh, permanently uh, it could flip in a second. So I don't think it's quite as quite like that, but it's there, there is a lot of impetus on both sides to get this done. There's no love for big tech. Any company that makes more than $500 million uh, is worth more than $500 million. There's not a whole lot of love for it on, in Congress right yeah. now. Or, but that's or, the people who are, that, those are the people who are complaining about it too. <laughs> like, you know, the people who are trying to get in are the $500 million. The, the but, legislation, uh, as marked up, because they did modify this, applies to companies with a market cap greater than five hundred fifty billion and more than fifty million monthly active users. Yeah, um, and that any determination that they they basically own a platform that they can right. they, they they control a dominant platform. So yeah. it's not you really have to you really have to be in the in the golden the golden double diamond tier uh, in, in order to be subject to this. Uh, Thursday there was a modification uh, that a appeared to respond to Apple's concern about, you know, Apple has been telling the, the senators, hey, look, you're, you're going to, we, we have this very popular feature where people turn off ad tracking. You're going to make it impossible for us to do that. So they marked it up in the modified, there's a new provision that says uh, platforms are not liable for requiring consent before allowing access to user data. That's in, That makes sense. Why should a platform be liable for requiring consent before allowing access to my data. They should always ask that. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, another one exempts a fee for service subscription like uh, Amazon Prime or presumably Apple One. Further hearings on the bills should have been held before the vote, said several senators that yeah. measure uh, would require changes to secure their support on the Senate floor. So it's not, it's not a, a done deal. Supporters of the bill met with White House officials Wednesday to, uh, to get support there, but the Biden administration has not yet taken a position on the matter speaking of government uh biden just signed an executive order uh supporting right to repair not sure what the weight or force of that is but is his heart's in the right place he signed it with a pentalobe screwdriver perfect. <laughs> uh okay okay let's take a little break come back with more our show today brought to you by our food box <laughs> every Thursday. I love it. Oh, I love it. It's imperfect <laughs> foods. I actually look forward to coming home. There it is on my on my porch, the imperfect foods box. By the way, we recycle that, which is nice. They're very good on packaging. That's one of the things. Food boxes always made me nervous with all that packaging. This is so much better for the environment for so many reasons. First of all, it's food that would otherwise be thrown away or fed to animals Imperfect foods, the whole premise of it was to reduce food waste. You'll also save time on grocery shopping, and you'll eat more fresh, delicious food. Here's a cringeworthy stat. Every year, 35%, more than a third of the food supply, goes unsold or uneaten in the U.S. Often because, you know, there's a blemish or that pomegranate's just a little too small. 
That artichoke is not the size of your head. Imperfect Foods is working to turn this around by sourcing foods that would otherwise just be unsold, destroyed. Combating climate change is tough, and I think we all want to do something about it. This is one way to a delicious way to make an impact. So it's a so what is it? It's a grocery delivery service offering a, a line, as you can see on the website, of a sustainable groceries, all, all kinds, including dairy products and meats that taste delicious. They reduce waste just by embracing the natural imperfections in food. Visit uh, the website, imperfectfoods.com, and see if they deliver in your area. What's nice is they, they take all the deliveries in a neighborhood and do them all on the same day. And by doing that, they produce 25 to 75 percent fewer emissions than people going to the grocery store. So it's it's good for the environment in a whole bunch of ways. You could personalize your order every week, choose from fresh seasonal produce. The produce is beautiful, by the way. I was expecting something, you know, a little, little, you know, bruised or bent or broken, but no, no, it's beautiful. It's it's gorgeous. Uh, which makes me really wonder: grocery stores are are, are not selling this because what? It's that broccoli is too small. Give me a break. It tastes better. Pantry staples, yummy snacks, too. Your order arrives on the same day every week. As I said, ours is Thursday. That's that. That's nice because we know our shopping is done. Uh, on average, Imperfect Foods customers save six to eight pounds of food with every order. And that uh, So lower emissions, lower waste. And say goodbye to packaging guilt. Imperfect Foods is the only national grocery delivery company that makes it easy to return your packaging after every order. So it comes in a nice cardboard box. I break it down. They take it back. We recycle that. Uh, there's, not a lot, there's not a lot of plastic bags in there or anything like that. A lot of the produce is loose. I just really like it. It's just a great experience and great food. And you'll feel good. Imperfect Foods is right now, they're offering our listeners 20% off, not just your first order, your first four orders, Go to imperfectfoods.com. The promo code is MACBREAK. 20% off your first four orders. That's up to an $80 value. Imperfectfoods.com when you use the promo code MACBREAK. Imperfect. I-M-P-E-R-F-E-C-T foods.com. I think they're perfect. I think everyone is a perfect little snowflake. I love them all. Imperfect Foods. <laughs> the offer code is MACBREAK. Imperfectfoods.com. Calm. We love it. We've been very, very happy with it. Uh, a little time uh, to go back to the news. The news of the day. Epic Games is appealing. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> they, uh, not that appealing, Leo. They, they're, they're very appealing. They're filing, uh, they filed <laughs> with the uh, United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Uh, both Apple and Epic have decided to appeal. <laughs> Uh, neither company was satisfied with the outcome, which tells me it was perfect, but okay. Uh, Epic Games wanted the court to force Apple to support 30-party app stores. That did not happen. Uh, Tim Sweeney, the CEO, said ruling wasn't a win for developers or for consumers. Uh, we knew they were going to appeal. Epic Games asked whether Judge Rogers, Gonzalez Rogers, had made mistakes with some of her findings, including the finding that Apple's not a monopoly. So uh, we shall. We They're more shall. of a candy land. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the opening brief is out. If you uh, want to read it, don't expect me to. I, 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 <laughs> no, not not going to do it. I just think that Epic has whatever they thought that they were going to get out of this. Well, um, they got nothing. I, no. Well, and the thing is, is that after the dust is settled, if if Apple truly does partner up with Unity and as they go into the next platform, um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the whatever they were going to get out of this lawsuit is will be you know I mean, if, if even if they won five years from now the amount the, the billions that they lost in between probably won't make up for whatever they thought they were going to shave off yeah I, I I guess I'll do this uh, Michael put it in the list I think it's interesting what happened this is uh, in CNET Andrew Hoyle writing when my M1 Max MacBook Pro Met a $60,000 camera. He's talking about the Phase 1, <laughs> which is right. a, a medium format uh, camera. He's, I guess, a professional photographer. So this we bought one uh, I haven't heard yet. I bought this M1 Max loaded for uh, Anthony, right? Has he said anything yet? Has he even come to work yet? Is he gone? <laughs> Has he moved to Montana? What's going on? 
He's probably still home with it. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't blame him. Awesome selfies. Yeah. Alex sent him a photogrammetry project. We never saw him again. Well, that's kind yeah, of, that I actually. I was like, don't come back until you finished it. That's kind of what Andrew did. <laughs> so Hoyle uh, took 28 full resolution images from his phase one, 11 gigabytes, and uh, loaded them into uh, Photoshop, each one with its own masking adjustments and other effects. A behemoth of a Photoshop document. He wants to composite all of these images. He said, working on the MacBook Pro felt swift. The camera was tethered over USB-C. Oh, he was taking it into, the, he was using Capture One to take it into. Capture One is nice because uh, it's uh, M1 native, which is great. Yeah. Uh, he says it was zippy with no noticeable lag, which is a big problem, I'll be honest with you, in some software, <laughs> uh, especially with these big RAWs. When making adjustments to the images. The Adobe. Yeah, Adobe, yeah, that's the one. Uh Lightroom is so awful. Yeah. But you know, I have to say, the native Adobe stuff is really sweet. When flicking yeah. between the shots I'd taken, no no noticeable lag. This alone was a relief. <laughs> uh, initially exported 45 full resolution images in uh, Phase 1's IIQ format into one image stack on Photoshop. Took 2 minutes, 44 seconds to load the images into the document. He did the same thing on a... Uh, 13-inch M1 last year's was 16 gigs of RAM. It struggled, crashed multiple times before taking eventually almost exactly five minutes to load the stack. So slower, but also uh, struggly. He's tried the same import uh, with the i9 MacBook Pro. Took four minutes, 43 seconds. So, um, you know, this is twice as fast, I guess. What yeah. I saw that was really interesting, too, is that Marquez famously was traveling around, MKBHD was traveling around with an iMac Pro in a, in a suitcase to all the events because he just couldn't edit on a laptop, and he said he's just he's back to editing on a laptop, and that's 8K Red Raw footage. Nice. Which mm -hmm. is, like, you, he's now more easily doing on a laptop what he was doing on an iMac Pro just, what, two, three years ago. It's Alex, amazing. did you get any M1 Maxes? You didn't. No. No, I'm still waiting for the. I just don't. I just couldn't justify the the cost for the amount of time I spend where I need a laptop. And, and this is this is also you know I don't even take my so all of my hardware. I have a lot of hardware, but all of it sits in one room in my house. And when I walk out, the only thing that leaves with me is potentially an iPad and maybe my iPhone. Um, and uh, or my iPhone always walks out with me, but, but the iPad is the only other thing that I really take out of the room. And the reason for that is also just from a lifestyle perspective. I just like to walk out, be able to walk out of the gear room and have it not be techie. And so, um, so anyway, so I, um, so I, I don't, I just don't need a laptop. There's no, just no reason for me to, um, do that. And so I just couldn't justify buying it. I really want the max chip. Um, uh, and I've been really close, but I have other things to spend money on right now. <laughs> so Anthony, do you like it? I'm telling you, I don't think I'm ever going to see him again. <laughs> uh, but uh, good. I'm glad, you know, it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, let's see. I'm just uh, go, kind of the seeds and the stems at the bottom here. Apple may use optical audio transmission from AR, VR headsets to AirPods. At least they applied for a patent. They don't think a patent means anything. Yeah. Well, well, one it, of them this, does. The which, Ericsson which the five hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> the Ericsson suit is a good reason to why you just write. Pat so pat someone comes pat up pat with pat something pat and you go, yep. "Hey, that might be a good idea. We don't know if we'll use it, um, and we'll give you, you know, the engineer gets a little bit of money, and and so and then we'll write the patent, you know, and and you give it to lawyers. And I think they it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patents a, a, a year, uh, maybe thousands of patents a year. But a lot of it's to protect yourself from ideas in the future and just to be able to say, you know, prior art. Prior art, prior art, <laughs> prior art. Yeah, prior art. So, we, uh, we, we thought of that. We already thought of that. I already thought yeah, of that. Yeah. It also the, blocks the everybody else. Right. Yeah. The physicist uh, Richard Feynman, in his in his memoirs biography, uh, tells a great story about how he has like a half dozen of the most basic patents on nuclear energy out of sarcasm. <laughs> 
he goes, he was working, he was working on some government project, and there was a memo that went that the directors went around. Say, hey, if you have any ideas for how we could use this nuclear energy that we're theorizing about, you know, write them down because we'll we'll get patents on it. And he bursts in the heap, and so Feynman, being young and being full of beans, oh, this is stupid. Like, there's just too many ideas. Like, oh, all right, well, give me some examples. Like, okay, fine. Uh, put a nuclear reactor in a submarine. Use the heat to uh, use the heat to like heat up uh, heat up water and make a jet in the back. Boom, nuclear submarine. Okay, uh, nuclear reactor heats up air uh, and makes a thing. Boom, you got a nuclear jet. And then he got a like. Then he got like a letter like three weeks later. Okay, uh, two of the two of the eight IDs you came up with has already been patented, but the other six are yours. <laughs> And so out of sheer sarcasm, because like you said, at a certain point, you just can, can patent basic ideas if you're th if you're there first and it's not terribly obvious. Yeah. So this, this is this is why he, this is why the, looking at patent filings are always interesting, but never definitive. I think Anthony likes the new MacBook. I'm not sure. He just responded in Discord. Yes! Exclamation mark. I don't know what, what, what <laughs> question he was answering. Uh, but, I mean, you're being held hostage, <laughs> Anthony. Yeah, Anthony, tug your ear if you're being held hostage. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get. We'll Leon, get. His... <laughs> I, I, I've never asked this, but uh, when 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 hardware comes into the office, do you put like a barcode on it, some sort of a tracker, just to make sure. You know, little, no, little clipboard signing no. in, signing them out. No. <laughs> Only in the equipment rooms, not the laptops, John says. The laptops, you know. Here he comes. Do you like it, Anthony? Yeah, it's great. Is it fast? Yes. Is it all you'd hoped it to be? Very quiet also. Very quiet. Fan yeah. doesn't come on, does it? No. Uh, but also, I mean, I haven't done a crazy project on it yet, but like even scrubbing through, you know, 10-bit 4K footage, graded, yeah. like it's just, you scrub right through it. You know? Scrub right through 4K. Good. Yeah. That's it. I just, so you know, good. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I thought you'd gone to Mexico. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I would have. I'm just saying I would have. That's if I had had the chance. Uh, $4,200 laptop in hand. Um, I The only, you know, I really love the, four, I got the 14-inch the M1 Pro, and it's really fast. The only yeah. hard stuff I've done with it, though, is like uh, computer programming. I did a... Actually, I have a pretty good score on my um, uh, my pathfinding problem. We we were all doing that admin of code <laughs> thing, and I got like down a giant like I can't remember it was uh, thousands of cells. It was you know a grid of a million cells or something. Two 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 seconds, just like that. It's really yeah. good. So very happy, very happy. It's fast. I'm going to make a Wordle joke for a minute. It's so it solves my Wordle problem <laughs> like that. <Yeah. laughs> God, what, 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 I can't. I can't even think about what computer science students are are, are going through in, in solving their solving their assignments. That there's so many things that like when I was going through computer science, you could not. Uh, of course, we it's, it would be impossible to brute force this uh, yes, solution. Exactly. So come up with an algorithm. Say, yeah. Well, actually, now on my phone, I could brute Do force something it in smart. Point four seconds. Yeah, exactly. Might be clever. Yeah, yeah. This is no. This this runs pretty quick, so I'm I'm a, I'm ha I'm a happy with it. Um, Apple is get your gentlemen start your macros. Apple's looking for your best iPhone macro photos for Apple's shot on iPhone challenge. I think it's because we saw so many cat photos with the Pixel Six on the subreddit <laughs> that they've decided, holy cow, is that a pretty shot? Uh, so uh, the challenge starts today, runs through February 16th. Winners will be announced in April. Uh, I think you get it. Do you get anything? Probably, you know. You got Peter McKinnon judging this year. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Uh, hashtag. I mean, typically, I, I think people get paid for it. I mean, they get, you know, they, if, they, if they, they use them. Yeah, if they, yeah, if they use them, they pay them for it. Yeah. The winning photos uh, yeah, will be I, celebrated in a gallery on Apple's newsroom, Apple Instagram, and other official Apple accounts. Probably if you get celebrated, you don't get anything. But if you appear in digital <laughs> campaigns, Apple Store locations, billboards. No, there was billboards. a big controversy a couple of years yeah. ago. They didn't announce payment, and people got really angry. And Apple's like, of course we're paying we people. We pay them. The press oh, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah they're, 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 that's that was the whole shenanigan. They're, they're, they're definitely paying everybody. Yeah, why not? And this yeah, is good for them. Uh, you can also uh, share your favorite macro photos on Instagram and Twitter. Hashtag shot on iPhone and iPhone macro challenge. That's how you submit. But don't those uh, don't those sites crush those photos somewhat? Maybe not. Yeah, they make you cry. Like Twitter's compression will make you cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a mushroom that looks yeah. like a celestial body. It's uh, like a, a celestial. Yeah. Two two centimeter focal length. Here are blueberries and cream. Yeah, nice. So yeah, a non varma National Geographic explorer. Uh, Apexha Maker, 
commercial photographer, owner of the House of Pixels, Peter McKinnon, well-known filmmaker, YouTube creator, breakout YouTuber of the year in 2019. But what have you done for me lately? Uh, and Patty Chow, these are all the judges, a photographer who specializes in capturing life's moments on iPhone. And Yik Keat Lee, urban photographer from Singapore. is a big list, long list. Nice. Ella Huff, who runs Apple's photo program, uh, she has, uh, all of the people who are involved in Apple's camera technologies, they have Instagram accounts, and they are some of the most fantastic photographers I should follow I've ever them seen. Della, yeah. 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 Uh, John McCormick, they're all terrific. You can also uh, post it on Weibo, uh, but I would bet the people who really care about their images will email the highest resolution to shot on iPhone at apple.com. You, but there's a whole big thing using the file format, first name, underscore, last name, underscore, macro, underscore, iPhone model. Subjects must be shot on iPhone macro challenge submission, blah, blah, blah. Straight from the camera, edited through Apple's editing tools in the Photos app or edited with third-party software. Oh, so you are allowed to tweak it. You have to be 18 to participate. Not open to Apple employees or their immediate families. I always enjoy those shot on iPhone shots. They're always yeah. amazing. Yeah. Especially when it's clear that the, the people who win, I, I'm glad it's open to any, everybody because it shows the, the the prowess of the iPhone as a camera system. But I love it when it's just the 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 description is no, I was just out for a walk and that's like what the first picture I took in like two weeks and it just came out really nice and it's and people said oh you should you should enter it you should enter it because it really does show you how good a picture can be with just somebody taking a walk with their phone in their pocket. Lilith Wittmann is a German citizen who has used the Apple AirTag to discover a hitherto unknown German spy agency. <laughs> the Bundesservice Telekommunikation. Uh, this is in German, so for those of you who don't speak German, including myself, I shall go to the Apple Insider piece. She says she uncovered Germany's little-known federal telecommunications service is actually a camouflage authority for a secret intelligence agency. Uh, in her blog post, she explains how she was able to do this with the air tags. Um, yeah, it's a it's it's a great story where she all she it's it's it was this is like the second part of like a two month like little like uh, investigation where she all she was just like going through a list of government agencies looking for ones that seemed interesting that she'd never heard of and she came across this one that just seemed like a harmless like telecommunications thing oh well gee I wonder where it is and every time she tried to find out like where it is or where it was whether she phoned somebody or whatever she just came came to, came to dead ends or hi remember we sent you a document please get rid of it because it doesn't exist anymore or people like hardly f hanging up the phone so this was like the two month the second month of her investigation she was trying to figure out if uh this agency was she suspected that it was a sort of an aid part of an intelligence arm the way she, she could prove it is if well if i send a piece of mail to this innocuous communications division and it winds up in the build in the building or the neighborhood where our big intelligence apparatus is that would be an indication of something interesting wouldn't it and so she <laughs> got a travel magazine hollowed out a core into it dropped an air tag into it mailed it off and sure enough it wound up it wound up where she thought it was she mailed them up. an air tag it appeared at the office for the protection of the constitution in cologne which of uh, is <laughs> <laughs> kind of interesting name for uh, what is that's apparently a, that's, an that's intelligence a euphemism. agency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she says uh, in her latest post, she says uh, the intelligence service can keep the air tag. I heard they're supposed to be very expensive. So, they, <laughs> <laughs> they, so. do we know if like if she actually tracked something or they just detected electronics and goes nope 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 we're sending this to the federales and then it got redirected for oh maybe like, that's like, yeah you know, in okay or yeah that's possible I guess I'm sure it's not as sexy a story not but sexy, you, know, you yeah. never know what this stuff you're you're thinking you're doing your thinking Apple Music the world's second most popular music streaming service this is uh, this is according to uh, uh, a uh, meet M I D I A media research post. Spotify thirty one percent, Apple Music fifteen percent, followed by Amazon thirteen, ten cent thirteen, YouTube eight, NetEase six, Deezer two, Yandex two. I'm sad about title; it doesn't even show up. <laughs> Other ten percent that's divided among a lot of people. I actually uh, paid for title just because I wanted to hear their. I would press streaming, you, but 
I was excited. I, I, I got on title to listen to the spatial. And the problem is, is that the registration was so difficult. I couldn't get that it working painful. on my, yeah, on yeah. my Apple TV. And I was like, yeah. okay, enough. Forget you it. Know. Yep. I did the free subs, you know, one month or whatever. I'll probably cancel. Anyway, I just uh, where Neil Young tells me. nobody obviously says <laughs> how well they're doing, but this is, uh, this is media researches, uh, conclusion based, uh, on their research. That's for Q2 love last year. And it's global, by the way. Well, Pono Player is still a fine product. I I, I was listening to Neil Young this morning, and man, I I you know my Pono is now in the museum, but it's still. <laughs> if you, I, 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 I like that he's still a hippie. I like that he's still trying to say, so, Spotify, you, you you can't have any of my. Didn't he say like this morning, like take everything off my? If you off have of Joe Rogan, you don't have me. Because yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. He says, <laughs> All right, it's man. me or me or Rogan. I like that. Meanwhile, Eric Clapton's saying we're all hypnotized to, take, yeah, there you to go. get the shot. So, you know, you can pick your rocker. Pick your rocker. Whatever you believe, <laughs> you pick the rocker that goes along. How about science? Beliefs. How about I don't pick any of them? I just pick science. <laughs> How about science? I uh, just got my test results back. I am still negative. Yay! Uh, I've been tested. So our son, 19-year-old, uh, contracted COVID uh, a week ago. It's been a week now. And uh, he's been sick, poor kid. He's not dying or anything, but it's like a really bad cold, basically. He's yeah. sore throat. He's stuffed up. He's got a bad headache. So yeah. we locked him in his room. And then Lisa <laughs> and I have immediately tested negative. But we're both boosted. And, uh, of course, so was he. But uh, we're both boosted, and we've been doing all the right things, washing our hands, feeding him through the door, that kind of thing. And uh, <laughs> a lot are of you doing his cuts, TikToks while he's sick, Leo? Yeah, are you keeping I'm, his channel going? Not that son, the other one, Michael. Uh, I don't, oh, okay. TikToker, he works through COVID. He's been he's had COVID okay. twice now. Henry has, and he just, oh. he works right through it. He doesn't. <laughs> he's a Laporte. <laughs> he's a Laporte. He works through it. But uh, so Lisa and I keep getting uh, tested, and so far so good. No, uh, negative. I just tested this morning. Uh, so good news. Uh, yeah. It's possible to care for somebody with COVID if you're careful. And you're willing to lock them in the room. In their room, <laughs> you need a special Rapunzel <laughs> sealed room. And the, do you have like a hazmat suit? Still you don't have like the... a hazmat, like uh, when you yeah, open the we door. We wear masks, and I don't put a face shield on, but we wear masks. A hazmat. I uh, maybe you should have a hazmat suit. How many times? Uh, do you, how many? Ex ex how many excuses helmet, do you get to buy a hazmat suit? That's all I'm saying. That's it's a good point. <laughs> do you, I mean, should I get one with an oxygen bottle attached? No, Mandalorian oh. armor, Leo. This is your big chance. <laughs> <for> full Mandalorian <laughs> armor. Somebody's pointing out that 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 pie chart does not have Pandora on it either. Wow, that no. means Pandora is under two yeah. percent of the total market. Globally, yeah. Maybe Pandora is bigger in the U.S. Maybe it's not such a big global. Thing, well, some know. of them aren't available in in, in, right. in as many markets. There are very few of them. I like, think that's Apple probably Apple Music in like a hundred, mar hundred and fifty markets. Right. I think when they I think that's, it. that's it unusual. Yeah. Apple, I don't know what this means. You're going to explain it. Apple delays in-app account deletion requirement extends IEP exception for group services. In order to provide more time for you to update your apps, we've changed the following requirement deadline to June. 30th. Um, app yeah, those account. are the app events that they announced that. Uh, the, to make it easier to delete your account. Is that it? The These are the requirements when updating your app. The account deletion option should be easy to find. It's insufficient to only provide the ability to temporarily disable or deactivate an account. People should be able to delete the account and their personal data. Apps in highly regulated industries may need to provide additional support flows to confirm and facilitate the account deletion process, follow applicable legal requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the anti-dark pattern provision. Ah, good. It was going to apply to all right. app submissions by the end of this month. Due to the complexity of implementing this requirement, we've extended the deadline to June 30th. That seems to happen a lot. It does, it's doesn't it? It's much easier to say you have to do this than it is for the developers to actually do it. Yeah. But I like that Apple puts a firm date down because if they didn't, it would take literally forever. It'll take as long uh, as Apple gives them, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, the, until a majority of important apps. I think that's always the barometer. Like, no one wants to have to eject uh, Instagram or something from their platform. So you give them as long as it takes the major apps to move over and then anyone else gets sort of cut off. Yeah. Historically, developer houses, it's... Uh, think. Uh, Work to work that they do on an app to comply with App Store regulations are always like less lesser priority than 
work to do to fix problems that exist in the app uh, and uh, work to do to add features to the app that your users are, are looking for. People are not looking for, hey, I, 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 gee, I'd I really love to use this to-do list manager, but I'm not sure if it, if it works with the GDPR disclosure compliance regulations that were just updated in the, in the EU last month. Like, no, they said, I really want to be able to do multiple selections and then to be able to pass that on to Evernote quickly. So this is why you really do, they really do have to have their arms twisted in order to do these things that the user is never going to really appreciate, but uh, it's going to take time yeah. away and money away from actually making the, the app visibly better. But I do love this because like there are so many places, especially traditional media outlets, where it's one button to subscribe, take your credit card information and start billing you and 18 phone cancel. calls yeah, exactly. to get it canceled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Including well, a right. mandatory like <laughs> talk with their with their uh, retention department, which tries to guilt you like a grandparent. Like, why? Why are you? Why are you removing your subscription? Well, and it's the worst. This is why I love buying things through the app store. Why I'm so sensitive to it being fragmented out. Because right now I just go, oh, I don't want to subscribe to that anymore. Like I just don't, you know, like in in, I in the back end. I actually completely agree with you. That is the single most valuable benefit of the app store. Yeah, just it, nowhere else yeah. is it that easy to do to yeah. review what you've subscribed to and 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 you know that'll be gone <laughs> if we like if, yeah. if we do it third party yeah. like it's it's gonna it, all of that'll be gone and we'll be back to like well it's good know, incentive to, to stick with uh, the app store and, and you yeah. know I mean that's a big but what will happen is is the big companies these are not again these aren't the small these aren't they're smaller than Apple but still we're talking about people who want to go from the gold to platinum <laughs> like you know and so so but they will eventually only make their apps available on uh you know for these outside of this and outside of the realm and so we as users will have to do that if we want netflix or or something like that or they'll go outside of it and give you know say well it's less expensive but eventually that outside price will go right back up to where where it is right now in the apple and then users will just pay 30% more and so the um so the thing is is that is that you know that's that's why you know there'll be a lot of one stars if if i see it, if if we see it show up so and i've gotten a lot of followers based on that so i think that it won't be just one <laughs> so anyway I wish my name were Leo Day, because then I could get Leo dot Day. Felicia dot got Felicia dot Day. <laughs> Felicia Day. Tazon, did Tazon got Tazon dot Day? Tazon dot Day. Today is the dot Day. According to Google, Google apparently owns the dot D-A-Y domain. They're launching that domain today, but you have to be in the early access program. Which, by the way, Felicia Day is... <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations felicia day has her actual name as a domain that's awesome uh there's wedding dot day by the knot valentine's day dot day valentine's dot day by ftd i think of all those people that collected it's all those dot coms <laughs> like, like you know yeah just, whoops yeah. Uh, you can just mint them it'll be fine Starting today, yeah, you, you can register your own dot .day domain as part of our early access program for an additional one-time fee. The fee decreases according to a daily schedule through the end of January. On February 1st at, at 8 a.m., dot .day domains will be publicly available at base annual price through your registrar of choice. So Google hold, holds on to, yeah, I can get it at Hover, but not till February 1st. And by then, all the good days will be taken. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Leo, the good days are ahead of us. Monday, Tuesday, yeah, Wednesday, all gone. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Payday. 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 Ooh, I like that. Yeah. That'll be gone. That'll be yeah. gone. All the good ones will be if gone. If you search Wordle on Google, I don't know if you saw that or not, Leo, but if you just search for Wordle on Google, it's it's the best thing. Well, let me do it right now. I did play Wordle already this Uber morning. It. Wordle. Okay. Yeah, just let You're, the search I will run. not. Oh, look, up at the top, it's doing Wordle. It's playing yeah. a little Wordle. That's so nice. That's nice. Did you, did you, did you try Googling uh, Betty White? Uh, I did not. Oh. Shall we try? Let's have some. We, we should cry, save all this for cold. tomorrow. Betty White. Nothing. Anything. <laughs> huh? Huh? What did you get? <laughs> I couldn't take it. What did you get? They're supposed to. I got. I got uh, like a rose petals tumbling down from the top oh, of the screen, followed by oh. "Thank you for being a friend." Maybe. Maybe. Oh, they, maybe. They, were not they probably done. stop. They don't do want to keep doing that. That's really sweet. Good for them. There is no Google Doodle today. That's weird. It just says Google. Is that right? You know, it's opposite day. Maybe that's why. <laughs> There's a, a YouTuber, Julie Nolke, who got famous for making this series called uh, Explaining the Pandemic to My Past Self. 
Um, and she basically goes back in time and tries to give her information about what's happening for the next six months. And this, the last week's one, she comes and she goes, so Betty White was trending again. And then I just had to stop the video. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't continue. That was just peak 2022 for me. Yeah. Um, a couple more stories. NVIDIA looks like they're going to abandon their ARM acquisition. $40 billion yeah. acquisition. That was a complicated one. Yeah. Microsoft to buy them. Yeah. A lot of, lot of uh, conflicting. Uh, yeah. Interest. A lot of direct direct competitors using yeah. the same technology that they're buying. That's a it's a rough one. And for those of us who still think uh, App, Katie Cotton is Apple head of PR, no, Tom Dowling's <laughs> not there either, right? Gone. Uh, Steve, yeah, Steve Dowling. Uh, Apple has a new head of PR, Stella Lowe, who served as Apple head of worldwide corporate communications since May, has now been replaced by Kristen. We're going to have to learn how to pronounce this. Hugue? Huguet? Quail. I'm just going to call her yeah. KQ. She's legit awesome. You know her? Have you met her? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I know her as well as I know you at Apple She's PR, a longtime she's, company she's spokesperson. She's got a, a phenomenal reputation. Yeah. And everyone seems really happy with her. And she's been with the company since 2005. It seems like Apple tries to go... Wow. Yeah, like they try to go... Sometimes they try to go outside of Apple, like Browit and Papermaker and... Um, Stella Lowe, and then like six months later, they're like, no, 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 we should just kind of want the culture. <laughs> yeah, Lowe came from yeah. Cisco. Um, yeah, yeah. Her new gig starts well, immediately. Dallin came from CNBC, I think, and he worked out great. Yeah. It's just yeah. not always. The oh, case. I remember that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she will report directly to Tim Cook. Her new gig starts immediately. It's interesting. Usually, there's a little transition. Maybe not. Stella, here's well, your she check. was already there working. Like uh, she was, yeah, she, she was knows her stuff. Exactly. Right. She's ready, uh, and that's the PR people that that Tim deal. Like Tim's not. I, well, I'm sure he deals with product PR, but like corporate co comms is what he he does all day. Yeah. Apple said Lowe is departing to spend more time with her family. That's always the, that's always the wow. You think they come up with something else? She, she tweeted yeah, that. But though. That's... She tweeted that this morning. She said it's like yeah. uh, hashtag is part of my family time. I don't know my son has I he's got COVID now, so I guess that's how I'm I completely it. understand yeah. that. You know, if I could yeah, afford no. to spend more time with my family, actually, when it's I don't when like it's a politician, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. When it's a politician who got caught doing something that will affect donations for the campaign or support yeah, from their that's, party, that's the one that, that's, suspicious. That's a, yeah. But but yeah. but somebody in a job like that, it's like I could under I could totally understand the idea of wait a minute, I just. I I just remembered how much money I have and that I don't have to do any of this right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, if you've been there, if you've been in Apple for a job. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a real, I mean, most, most of the things, I mean, Apple is not definitely not the same. Uh, it's, it's a little heavier it's from, from what we hear than, yeah. than, than, yeah. you know, some of the other companies. And so, uh, you know, you, you get, you know, I think there's a lot of people working pretty hard there, especially when you get to that altitude. I think it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty yeah. rough place. And the teams are still so small comparatively. Yeah. Let us uh, take a break, and then you, you, uh, peerless prognosticators, can come up with your picks of the week. Picks next. But first, a word from Melissa. Addresses change, emails change, names change, people move. If your contact list is not constantly updated, it's getting out of date. Guess what? It's a brand new year. Time to kind of look at your data and make sure it's okay. According to the Postal Service... In 2020, 36 million address changes processed. 36 million address changes in one year. Melissa solves this problem. They can help you make sure your data is current and accurate. They've been doing it for over 35 years. That's why over 10,000 businesses think of Melissa as the address experts. A renewal rate of over 92%. Because 25% is the typical ROI for Melissa customers. That tells you a lot right there. It's well worth it. Verify addresses, emails, phone numbers, and names in real time with Melissa if you need to. Their global address verification services works for 240 plus countries and territories. It can even work at the point of entry. One of the things I love about Melissa, it's very flexible. You can get it on-prem. You can get a web service. They have an FTP site you can upload and download from. Software as a service. And the API, which a lot of people use to actually do it at point of entry. Because that's often where the first errors occur. And if you're tired of duplicate customer information in your database, Melissa's data matching will help eliminate clutter and duplicates, increasing the accuracy of your database while reducing postage and mailing costs. 
You could do batch address cleaning, process an entire address list for accuracy and completeness. You could do identity verification, which these days is really more uh, is just as much about security as anything else. Reduce risk, ensure compliance, keep customers happy. You can convert addresses into latitude and longitude coordinates if you want. That's kind of cool, geocoding. There's also email verification, which works so well it can remove up to 95% of bad email addresses from your database. Flexible deployment options will suit any preference, and you can be assured that your data is secure because they go undergo independent security audits on a regular basis to reinforce their commitment to data security, privacy, and, of course, compliance. They're SOC 2, HIPAA, GDPR compliant. You might want to check out the new Lookups apps, iOS and Google, both, to search addresses, names, and more at your fingertips from Melissa. And if you sign up for a service level agreement, you will love the 24-7 world-renowned support from the nicest people in the world at Melissa's Global Support Center. If you are a qualifying essential worker or supporting a community, you can still get six months of free service. Apply online at melissa.com. COVID-19 is not over, nor is Melissa's support for those supporting communities and qualifying essential workers. And please join me in congratulating Melissa. Once again, they did it again, named to the Data Quality Magic Quadrant by Gartner, second year in a row. Make sure your customer contact data is up to date. Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing in the API sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records clean free. Just go to melissa.com slash twit, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, melissa.com slash twit. We thank Melissa so much for uh, supporting the show, and we thank you for supporting the show by using that address so they know you saw it here, melissa.com slash twit. Renee Ritchie, pick of the week, Renee. So I've got two of them, and they're both videos. Now, one of them is incredibly long, and I have to admit, I have not been able to make it all the way through, but it just keeps getting recommended to me. It's, and it's two a video hours and 18 with, minutes. Holy Yes, moly. and even then, it doesn't address everything because there's a lot of... It deals with NFTs and the problems surrounding NFTs, what, what's, what solutions they provide, whether those solutions are new and novel, what difficulties or problems they introduce. It doesn't get into the legal ramifications, which are huge, which we saw things like... You know, we bought a Dune book with our DOA and now we're going to make a movie about it, which yeah. has tremendous legal ramifications beyond just the technology involved. And this, at least so far, and based on everything that I've seen from everybody who's watched it to completion, is just an incredibly good, reasonable, thorough, balanced, um, sane look at what the technology actually is, what the problem space it addresses is, the realism surrounding it. Uh, and, and it was pointed to me because right now there's a part of my Twitter timeline that vehemently, adamantly believes that if you're not all in on NFTs and DOA, DAOs and uh, blockchains and all this, that you are beyond a Luddite and you're being left behind. Yeah, you know who says that? The, People graveyard who, of, yeah. People who are speculating in crypto and NFTs who desperately no, need a market to exist. Totally. For, <laughs> for but their speculation. The other part of my timeline are people who are like, this is the worst techno uh, technophiliac um, pyramid scheme I've ever seen. And they both threaten to block each other all the time. My Twitter timeline has never <laughs> been more hostile. Yeah. Nobody argued about Web2. Like nobody argued about OAuth and CSS and, and Ajax, the way that they argue about these yeah. technologies. So, but this again is just a very sane um, deliberation of the technologies. My personal belief is that these are going to be building blocks of future products. Mainstream people shouldn't care about them until they're actually embod embedded in apps. Like nobody cared about Ajax before it became Google Maps and Instagram and Facebook. And nobody cared about OAuth until it became sign in with Twitter or sign in with Google or all those things. So they, they, you, like, it really is just really fetishizing technology at this point, but it's really good to, to know and to understand it. And my second pick is another video called... Uh, let me um, just give people the location yeah. for this. So the, the oh, channel sorry. is Folding Ideas, and, uh, and it's on YouTube. Line goes up. I'm not sure what that means. The problem with NFTs. Should be easy to find. 1.8 million views in the last five days. That's pretty good. For a two-hour video. <laughs> for a two, more than two-hour video. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Folding Ideas is the channel. Um, it looks like he's got a lot of other interesting content on there. All right. Part two. Part two is just a, a very adorable uh, video called Finding X. Um, 
And it's just because it's it's animated math videos, which I, love I thought was yeah. an adorable concept. Yep. And it's just because everybody's always solving for X. But what about X, Leo? How, do we ever stop to think How about X? How does X feel about the whole thing? Uh, I yeah, know. yeah. Are you doing yeah. okay, X? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like just a little health check. Uh, but it's, it is so gloriously animated. And the, the YouTuber who did it, and I'm just blanking on her name right now, but um, it, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous work. It's the kind of thing that makes me smile uh, in the morning. And I need those smiles. Very cool. Finding X, entertainment. a mathematical yeah. short film by TBs or Tibbies. Yes, that's it. Yes, very cool. Adorable. There's X on the beach. <laughs> Uh-oh, they found him. 20%. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Anako, pick of the week. A uh, simple but really, really useful app for the iPad and the iPhone uh, called VizRef. All it is, it's an infinite canvas sort of idea board where uh, it's just, as it says, it's an infinite canvas where you can import, paste, take pictures, whatever, uh, and basically drop these on this board wherever, oops, wherever own, you want them to your go. Your own personal Pinterest. Yeah, well, see, the, the idea is that oftentimes, like, your org, it's... When you have a collection of images, like in this case, like every time I see a, like an, an oil painting or something that I really like, like I I I, I dump it into uh, I dump it into an album, and I have so many of them that now I kind of need to organize them, like I figure out what do I have duplicates of and what are like what uh, in what cases do I have. Uh, 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 artworks that's are that are being done by the uh, not just by the same artist but here's the same model that did both of them uh, and the ability to simply splat a peak splat an image just anywhere you want to and then just like move it around wherever you want to is and this then Andy's resize it. vision board we're looking at <laughs> I wish this is, <laughs> this is because 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 these are all like really really talented people that kind of kind of inspire me uh but th uh, th I, I can't see that it's it's so good because it is so simple that the idea that and it, every one of these is being imported like at full size so if i even though this is like a little tiny thumbnail if i double tap on it it will just automatically zoom out to maximum size. Uh, I've used this a lot, like when either A, organizing a whole bunch of images, there are times when I'm trying to write something, I need a whole bunch of different uh, different pieces of information, visual pieces of information that I don't know how to organize inside my head, and I don't want to take the time to simply take this chart that I grabbed from someplace and then I type out, well, the trend, the hockey stick trend towards this is leading towards 2023. It's much easier to just simply say, look, I'm going to use this at some point. I'm just going to, do I'm just going to drop this here. I have tools that'll let, that will let me do that in other apps like Scrivener does that. Uh, and some note takers will let you import things as pictures, but this is just simply like you, you, you got, you clear everything off your desk. You, you just put all these things down there. You keep sliding them around like someone in a, like a detective in a 1993 nighttime cop drama on TV. Like there's got to be a connection between these three receipts and this security camera photo and these lab results. Uh, it's not for any one thing. It's a, it is one of my favorite classes of apps. It's an app that you have installed on your phone or on your uh, or on your iPad. And then at some point during life, you realize that, oh, I'm doing this the really, really hard way by trying to organize this through Omni Outliner. I can just dump these all, dump all these pictures into this big canvas, and then just drag them around until they make sense to me. Awesome! And it's not, it's not expensive. It's like three ninety nine. Uh, there's a separate version for the iPhone. Uh, there's a separate version for the iPad. And I, I got this a few weeks ago. And you, you, you can create multiple of these uh, of these uh, uh, image boards. And I now have like four or five, and two of them are kind of important now. <laughs> Very nice. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give us the most expensive guy in the show, in the shop. I guess it, I guess it will be the most expensive today because everything else has been pretty it's pretty, pretty cheap. expensive. Uh, Andy's is <laughs> yeah, four but, bucks, uh, dude. The others are free. What do you got? Yeah. So um, what I'm recommending because I've been using it now for a long time and I'm pretty happy. I just got a second one. Um, is the Viva? This is a tablet mount, and I was going to show you how I use it. Um, this is uh, whoops, wrong wrong button. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So um, these are the these are the tablet mounts, and you can see two of them here. Um, and you know what I can do is I have these on arms. These are just monitor arms. So what these are is Visa. These are mounts that hold my. This is a Wacom tablet. So this is how I. I don't know what this is going to do. This is how I draw. You know, over top of things. Um, and so, but but what I found was is that I needed. This is where I started with it. Is I needed to be able to move it around. 
And so I didn't want it to just be sitting on my desk because it was taking up too much desk space. Um, and then I thought, oh, I need my iPad to go somewhere too. And so I put put these on here. So what's nice is I can kind of move them in and out and get them to exactly, you know, where I want some other, that's, that's not, that's just a monitor. Um, but anyway, so, but what's really nice is that they, they, they act as a visa mount. So any, any arm that you have like this, that, that would have, that would take a monitor, you can simply attach it to it and then you can put tablets or Wacom tablets or other things on them and kind of keep them all moving. And so, um, and a lot of my arms are kind of that way. They kind of all, there's, there's one waiting for a monitor right now. Um, anyway, so, uh, so anyways, it's just a really real, I, I bought a lot of these over the last couple of years and this is the best one so far. I probably bought, I don't know, 15 of them. They're not <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Actually. Not particularly yeah, expensive. Yeah, 35 yeah they're bucks. not. But of course yeah, you have to have a visa a arm to, to put it on. Which, which are like, yeah, the visa arms are going to be more expensive. I mean, you know, the, the ones that I have are probably 80 bucks each. That's um, bad, the, so. Yeah, and the but they can get up to be inexpensive if you really want nice ones, and yeah. so mine, mine are the least expensive, almost the least expensive ones, but they're solid. Um, anyway, so but they're uh, yeah, they're great, they're great little mounts, and if you're trying to figure out, like if you get some mobile mounts, like with arms that can move, and then you start putting tablets or stuff on it, it's it's nice. So everything's on nice. arms in your studio, I bet everything. Uh, mo almost everything is on arms. Yeah, yeah. No, like like I have uh, if you. Um, you know, if you, if you look at my, my studio here, the, that's, you know, these are, these are, these are the two here. This one, this one's on an arm. This one's, this one's on an arm. This looks one's like a, even the speakers are on, everything's on arms. It's all on arms. Yeah. It, it gives you flexibility as you go yeah. around. You go like, oh, I want to move this up here Plus, or down there. And you have that great, even this is, even my mic is on an arm. So. Yeah. Fighter jet cockpit moment where you sit yeah. down and then you swing everything in. To, yeah. You know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. So it's, yeah. it's a, it's a. Is that a what? Tell me about your tin cup that looks like you're uh, drinking. Oh, that's that's a. Uh, I have two of these. Oh, it's an ember. Are, I didn't know yeah, they made are, metal embers. That's nice. Yeah, my mom got them for me, and and so oh, I, love I got my two ember, of them. But I have a ceramic this is, one. That's nice. This is the first hour. This is the second hour. <laughs> They're so, USB charged coffee mugs that keep your coffee warm. Yeah, and so they they sit over. Apparently, he you know, needs they, two of them, folks. That's well, how. I'm there for two hours, like <laughs> for office hours. Uh, what's nice is that they stay warm, so I drink one. Yeah, and it's nice and warm, and yeah. then I get to the second hour. I don't have to stand up. I have a nice warm you got another one ready. Tea. Still warm. I have some yep. more PG tips waiting for me right there, nice. and oh, That's good nice. to go. Yeah. So, and uh, just because somebody asked, your microphone is a Neumann TLM. 102. 102. Yeah, the 102 is like six or seven hundred dollars. The 103 is like twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and and by the way, since we're looking at this stuff, there's there's the rock collection. My my daughter made me a couple new I ones. I love those. Sarah, so looking Space better. Space Invader. All she's good. Yeah. Wow. I love that. She is. That. She's got some. Does she find the rocks go. somewhere? Or does she ship them in? They're outside in front of the house. Oh, okay. She just she just goes out. <laughs> we have a lot. Whoever owned the house before had a lot, I mean, lot thousands of, of round rocks. So she just goes out and picks the rocks that she needs and brings them back. They're in. called river them. cobbles, and uh, yeah, yeah, and exactly. she's loaded with river cobbles. Yeah, they're, it's just ten feet. That's all she got yeah. to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex Lindsay. Officehours.global. If you want to join that coffee fueled extravaganza, it goes twenty four seven. But uh, the the morning is when the uh, you know the official office hours goes on. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's still every every morning. It's just something new. Is like it? we get to talk about something new that's related to it. And so we were talking today just about all the AV issues that you might have. A, a week ago, by the way, when we we're talking about NFTs, um, we had Elizabeth uh, Strickler on from from um, from. Um, in, she's she's a specialist and she teaches classes um, at uh, you know on, on NFTs. And but she's not like someone really promoting it. She just answered our questions about this is what you want to think about when, when you're talking about it. And so uh, it was good. But we'd range everything from NFTs all the way through to like what kind of wiring should you use? And and uh, yeah, so and tomorrow and Thursday we have a, some, a great artist coming on. And so so there's just a lot of a lot of different things. So it's it's a lot of fun. And there's also Sabado Gigante with cooking and music and conversation. We're constantly figuring stuff out. You know, the what's what's really happening is somewhere in the primordial ooze of this sh of this or organization is coming out new ways of doing uh, online events yeah. you know and new ways of doing broadcast yeah, really I mean, interesting. Yeah. to have a something that you can imagine the the chaos that would normally happen but we have you know anywhere from 10 to 20 
people on the panel any any given morning. So it's amazing. It's a, and and it works seamlessly. It's a big just one big Zoom call. You can find out more by going to officehours.global, including getting an invite. And of course, there's a YouTube channel uh, as well. Uh, if you want to hire Alex, 090.media. That's his. Uh, that's his. I mostly specialize in, especially if you have something that you think might work in live that has never done, been done before. That's kind of most of my job. He likes to do crazy stuff. Is what he's doing. I do mostly crazy, crazy yeah. stuff. <laughs> stuff. No, everybody says you can't do that. Yeah. You can't do that. We help launch platforms. That's kind of what we. Nice. That's what, we, that's what I do anyway. And the nice. company does lots of different streams, lots of different streams for, you know, Marvel and other folks. But you know, most of my focus is on the kind of bleeding edge stuff. Mr. Anako, WGBH, next Thursday? Uh, uh, Friday, uh, the Friday. usual day, a little bit earlier, uh, 11.40 a.m. Go to WGBHnews.org to stream it live or to stream it later. And uh, any uh, any uh, information on the Grand Anako project? Is, is it coming along? I've had it's it's coming along. As a matter of fact, I've accidentally kept gotten like a, a, a gotten like a uh, <laughs> extra motivation because on on the radio last week. Uh, so oh, a reader asked, oh, I understand you're working on something. It's like oh yeah, uh, 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 and, and and it was one of those you you're, you're, you do radio, so you know that like when you drop on. So oh, by the way, we're 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 thirty seconds until commercial. But yeah. hey, uh, what, what's that like? I said, <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> quick. I, I, I I'm, I'm relaunching stuff. Stay tuned. It's nothing to announce yet. But yeah, definitely definitely check back later. I'm like oh nice. okay. So I I guess I guess I really do have to do this in the, on my on the, a little bit on the regular <laughs> timeline. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great when you just have this private thing that you're working on and that you don't you're not going to take the reps off. And it's but at some point you do have to publish. I understand. So yeah, it's it's coming along. It's coming along. Publish <laughs> or perish, Andrew. Good good artists. What is it? Steve Jobs ship. said, "Good artists, great ship, artists exactly. ship." Actually, yep. good artists ship. Great artists steal. No, no, that's something else. Uh, <laughs> commercial artist ship. <laughs> that's the thing for commercial commercial artist subcontract. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Rene Ritchie, of course, has his own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rene Ritchie, where he's working all the time to create great content for you. Anything else? Anything coming up? But you got you did the product shocker. We saw that. Yeah, I, well, I've been working on my animations now because I want to do a better job explaining things oh, to people. Oh, love so, that. Uh, most recently I've been doing, and, and YouTube is interesting. I spend most of my day figuring out how to take educational videos and wrap them up in YouTube candy so people will actually click on them and then give me a <laughs> shot at, at, at explaining things. So I did like a big Bluetooth explainer and then I did a big lightning versus USB-C versus MagSafe explainer. And then yesterday I did my biggest one, I think ever, which was an OLED versus mini LED versus micro LED. <gasps> uh, the, the problems with all of them, but also like, the technologies and hopes for the future and how you mitigate them and where they use them. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun for me. Oh, that's cool. What are you using I, for I, the animation? I, I'm actually doing them straight in Final Cut, which I know is going to make Alex so disappointed in me uh, because I'm not even <laughs> doing them in Keynote or in Motion. I'm doing them straight in Final Cut because I'm an that's old great. timeline animator. Um, yeah. But I, I like I have like the, like you see like the sub pixels. I have like RGB Stripe, Apple's weird Apple Watch version of Stripe, Samsung's S Stripe, the... Um, the, uh, what do they call them? The pentile. Uh, you kind of need uh, illustrations. Just, you can't talk about that stuff. You have to actually show yeah. it. So this is a perfect, yeah, I, I, perfect place to do I this. I do like really fake simulations of what it looks like when OLED pixels <laughs> decay and the blue pixel decays <laughs> faster, uh, you know, or, or things bloom or why burn in happens, all those things. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and he even labels them fake simulation. <laughs> Super fake simulation. Yep. <laughs> thank you, Renee. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Alex. We do Mac. And thank you most of all for joining us. We we do Mac Break Weekly uh, every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. If you want to join us, you can watch us live, of course. Uh, you don't have to, but you can at live.twit.tv. There's live audio and video there. People watching live, chat live at irc.twit.tv. And, of course, if you're a Club Twit member, the chat goes on all day and all night. Uh, Club Twit members for 7 bucks a month get ad-free versions of all of our shows. They get a special feed with unique products like the Giz Fizz, the Untitled Linux Show, Stacy's Book Club. There's a lot of stuff. Georgia Dow is going to be our guest uh, on an Ask Me Anything or a Fireside Chat coming up uh, soon. Uh, is it this week? I can't remember. Uh, coming up soon. Um, and then... Uh, 
uh, if you want to also uh, get the Twit Plus feed, I said that. What? Oh, the Discord. Yeah, and the Discord. All of that available, seven bucks a month at twit.tv slash club twit. Corporate memberships available. It is a very handy way, a very handy way uh, to uh, support what we do here. On-demand versions of our shows are always available for free, though. You don't have to join the club. At the website, twit.tv slash mbw, twit.tv slash mbw. Uh, once you get there, you'll also find a link to uh, the YouTube channel which is a, a great place to go to get, um, uh, you know, the shows in video. All of our shows are there. After the fact, you can subscribe by going to uh, our website or by just finding your favorite podcast application and uh, subscribing in there. If you do have a podcast app, by the way, that supports reviews, a fi I don't want to say anything, but a five-star review would be much appreciated. There, I said it. <sighs> I'm just a... Just a review grubber. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Now get back to work because break time is over. Have you ever read a tech news story and thought to yourself, man, I would love to talk to the person who wrote this to find out more information? Well, that's exactly what Micah Sargent and I, Jason Howell, do each and every week on Tech News Weekly. We read the stories that matter to us. We reach out to the people making a break in the tech news and we invite them on to tell their story. And you can find it at twit.tv. Look for Tech News Weekly every Thursday. <laughs>